Aleluya. Aleluya. Good evening, everybody. The Lord will surprise you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for this opportunity one last time. And um, I want to appreciate everybody who has been diligent all through this conference. Your time invested in God's presence will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands to heaven and ask him to give us a very definite encounter tonight. Move upon my life, O oh God. Move upon my destiny. Speak to me. Lift me by your power, by your word. Is someone praying? Visit me, O oh God, and give me a mighty encounter. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, that you reveal yourself to us afresh. Let there be a reign of the supernatural in this place. Help us even by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Be seated and I want you to be very, very sensitive. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, you can always wave it. Um, there should be ushers around you, especially for those who perhaps may just be coming outside. Do well. The ushers are ready to receive your prayer request. You just take your time to write and wave it to them. And then they'll collate everything so that we present it before the God who answers prayers. And you will surely testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When um, the invite for this conference was extended to me, um, for me it was, it's always been a great honor and a privilege to serve Jesus. I consider my service to Jesus as far as blessing his people an eternal privilege and I do not take it for granted this is why he's called us this is why he has helped us and so for me um, I really consider this aside from the fact that we have been called to be ministers by the grace of God um, ministering in this church especially because of the antecedents the history it was a very very emotional moment for me and um, so I came here for two reasons. Number one, to honor the invite and be a blessing to God's people as far as the grace that he's given is concerned. Um, but the second reason is also to come and say a big thank you. I know that this is many years, but I, before I have my final session, I needed to take this time to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you, New Heritage Baptist Church. Hallelujah. You see, you can change the future, but you cannot change yesterday. Hallelujah. For believing in me, believing in us, and allowing your church to be a platform for God to do the things that he's done through our lives. And we're not ashamed to say thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Hallelujah particularly to the angel over this house thank you so much sir it takes a lot of humility and flexibility i remember through the years when we'll be holding our conference he would just sneak in and i remember not once not twice he would just go to the back right there and just sit quietly and i'm like no this man should not do this this is the work that god has committed to him and your yieldedness 
has helped us has become a ladder for many of us to serve his purposes in a greater way we are deeply grateful sir deeply grateful hallelujah and i want to particularly thank the youth of this church thank you thank you for your love thank you for your kindness your cooperation and um, please permit my bias to thank our daddy and our mommy mommy ojela day mommy god bless you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah we look forward to going to our house many times that was our place of reception my goodness it was good to preach when um, if you are aware of what what is the, the buffet waiting there you would preach and stretch yourself and uh, we preach because we loved God but those things were consolations <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and so I owe you as a church our prayers first and foremost he said brethren pray for us I believe that there are many other Joshua Selman's even greater than Joshua Selman's that God will continue to raise God's God's idea is never to have just one person or a few people <clears throat> hallelujah our, our, our desire at this point is that our lives continue to remain models to inspire as many to know that there is nobody God cannot raise there is nobody God cannot help hallelujah the purpose of lifting the purpose of influence is to have a more elevated platform to draw people to Jesus hallelujah and so I sincerely I needed to do this before we get into the miracle service because once we start teaching and ministering that time may not come so um, I made the announcement I made for those of you who followed on Sunday it was a deliberate um, announcement just to number one to let the world know that nobody rises in isolation sometimes when God helps us and lifts us we get to a position where we become too proud and too ashamed to let the world know that there were people who bent over backwards to allow us the leverage to rise hallelujah and I do this in public to inspire somebody that local champion mentality that sense of invincibility even if you are Jesus there has to be someone to help you carry the cross hallelujah and so when people play significant roles in your life as you rise do not be ashamed and do not be afraid to look back and say thank you no matter how high you think God has lifted you you cannot be too big to look down look around and say thank you hallelujah and to say it sincerely not just pretentiously just for television and all of that people know where you are lying they are they are not stupid just because people are born again does not mean they threw away their reasoning they know when you are playing games and wasting their time but they can discern the sincerity of your heart when they know you are true hallelujah sometimes God allows us to do some of these things in public because it becomes an inspiration for someone someone who is already being deviated by pride finds a reason to come back and say so this is how this thing is done and at your level you can look for someone who has helped you thus far and say thank you many of you are surrounded by people who have given their heart taken risks with your life and yet we are not able to say thank you never become too big to say thank you never become too big no matter what you have no matter what you are the Bible says a man can receive nothing except it is given unto him I know we live in a celebrity world where our obsession is to be celebrities photos sports lights and all those things but that is the reason why many people do not last hallelujah this balloon success you see up and down people celebrated and tomorrow they go down forever is because if you listen to my series the teachings that we've been having both failure and success if not managed well can produce the same result it can destroy you both failure and success failure can plant fear it can it can deflate your passion to continue whereas success can bring pride in discipline complacency hallelujah Samson said I will arise as before and I will shake myself and he got up only to find out that that which kept the grace and the glory in his life had long left him hallelujah 
I'm praying for someone here already. May you never be someone who was great. May you never be someone who was an inspiration. Hallelujah. That your life will consistently continue to inspire many. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so please, New Heritage Baptist Church, accept my gratitude on behalf of myself and this great vision that God has placed in our hands. Hallelujah. And I didn't come alone. Um, I thought in my heart to do this just to bring a seed of honor to the church. And so we're planting a seed of 10 million naira as a blessing to the church. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is, this is from the depth of my heart to the church to say thank you for all you have done. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, let's be seated. Hallelujah. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Forever. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. visit us yet again let your word come with power in Jesus name please be seated hallelujah I just want to touch on one final subject let me request that you lend me your attention the Lord put this in my heart and after that we'll get to pray and then to minister to the needs of God's people hallelujah I'll be teaching very briefly on the Holy Spirit. There is something about this that I want us to understand. Hallelujah. It is impossible to talk about the supernatural. It is impossible to talk about a victorious life. It is impossible to talk about a life of victory and dominion in isolation to this personality that was given by God as a gift to us so I'll just touch a few things and please I want us to listen hallelujah because everything that is going to be happening here tonight will be credited to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit two scriptures Isaiah 32 and verse 15 Isaiah 32 3 2 and verse 15 let's read together one to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest the bible says no just 15 and that's fine that until the spirit is poured upon us just like rain from on high then every wilderness will be counted for a fruitful field and every fruitful field will be counted for a forest look at the transitions the moment the holy ghost arrives a wilderness can be turned to a fruitful field and a fruitful field can be turned into a forest hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth even though he came as the word incarnate the son of the living god and we've spent yesterday night and this morning discussing on the various aspects as God has allowed us of light even the Word of God hallelujah 
but when jesus walked upon the earth he seemed to be impotent as far as ability divine enablement were concerned until he had an encounter with the holy spirit himself even though he was the word of god the bible tells us in john chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him outside of him was not anything made that was made four says in him was life and that life was the light of man so light is not just scripture alone it is also life that life was the light of man hallelujah as powerful as all these descriptions as as documented by john are jesus walked upon the earth beginning as a baby in a manger who had to be hidden so that he would not be killed that meant he could die hallelujah and he grew up the bible does not give us too many events around the childhood of jesus just a few of them were recorded we know jesus as the baby born by mary and joseph and the magi coming to worship him presenting unto him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh and then the next time we see jesus he is 12 years old are we together going to the temple to learn under the doctors of the law to a point that his parents came to look for him and they said where have you been and he says have you not read do you not know that i should be about my father's business and that's the end of it the next time we hear of jesus christ he is age 30 a full-grown adult ready to begin his ministry so this prophet called john is baptizing hallelujah john is in the jordan baptizing and then he looks at this gentleman standing before him and john says behold the lamb of god who taketh away the sins of the world and jesus came to him to be baptized and john said i am not worthy to untie even the latchets of your shoes jesus replies and says suffer it to be so that scripture all scripture will be fulfilled and the bible says john led jesus to the river jordan and when he dipped him in water as he came out the heavens were opened the bible says and they saw the holy ghost descending in the similitude of a dove it came and rested upon jesus even though he was the word of god but the holy ghost had to come upon him and when he came and rested upon jesus there was a declaration from heaven one of the, the, the synoptic accounts will tell us and he says this is my beloved son it was a declaration in whom i am well pleased and the bible says from jordan there he was led straight to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he prayed there for 40 days and 40 nights was tempted of satan and eventually he overcame by the word and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and that was the beginning of an extraordinary ministry the blind seeing the dead being raised to life miraculous manifestations nature miracles healing miracles hallelujah he spoke so audaciously when he began to teach after he called his disciples he began to mentor them and he taught them in a way that the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine and said we have never seen it in this fashion jesus was an invincible person he manifested the god life in such a dimension and such a proportion that was simply phenomenal he threatened the political and the religious powers of the day they didn't know what to do with him they held meetings upon meetings and said listen this man is becoming a threat He's giving the people an orientation that is making them ask all kinds of questions. They caught a woman in adultery in the very act the Bible says and brought her alone to Jesus. And Jesus kept quiet, stooped on the ground and wrote and said, He who is without sin should cast the first stone. The Bible says they were convicted from the oldest to the youngest because the works of the flesh cannot save any man. And they left the woman and said, Woman, where are thine accusers? He says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That news spread abroad. Jarius' daughter, the woman at the well, all kind. I mean, every day was an episode of wonder from the life of this beloved son of God. By the time we get to John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, 
he began to introduce this mysterious personality to the disciples hallelujah the bible says but the comforter jesus is speaking now he started introducing them to this personality and he said ladies and gentlemen paraphrase him you see the invincibility and the exploits that have come from my life it is not just because i am the son of god i left all that to become ordinary to become a man in every sense i have been empowered by this holy spirit and he began to propose to them an idea that there was the comforter who was going to come by the time we get to chapter 16 and verse 8 please give it to us jesus is still teaching talking about the holy spirit chapter 16 of the book of john and verse 8 john 16 from verse 8 john chapter 16 and verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world jesus now is describing the ministry of the holy spirit that when he comes he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment verse 9 it says of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged now he speaks to his people i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak unto you and the bible says he will show you things to come verse 14 he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and he shall show it to you this is jesus speaking i can tell you that the disciples did not have an idea what he was saying they were just impressed that jesus was speaking as usual hallelujah now jesus gave himself to die and as soon as that was over when he resurrected in acts chapter 1 the bible says he gathered them again and for a period of 40 days he began to speak to them concerning the things that pertain unto the kingdom the disciples now asked him and said will you at this point restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has kept within his care acts 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power he said after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judea in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth a pharisee shows up in the book of acts and he has this strange encounter with the god of the bible and after 19 years thereabout in the wilderness of arabia he came back as a fiery apostle with an uncanny dimension of spiritual insight and it was paul who was helping us understand the secret behind the ministry of exploits of Jesus. The Pauline epistles were full of several testaments credited to the Holy Spirit. Apostle Peter was another magnificent apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the chief among all of the disciples. And it was him that God used to bring the salvation of the Gentiles of which we are part of. And in Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius, when you read from verse 38, Peter made a very profound statement. I hope we're still following. He said how God anointed Jesus. So that thing that happened in Jordan was beyond baptism. It was Peter now by the Spirit speaking as an apostle to say what happened that day was beyond just dipping in water and a voice speaking from heaven. That what happened that day was that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with number one, the Holy Ghost. Number two, with power. Number one, with the Holy Ghost. Number two, with power. The Bible says on the strength of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment that had come from him, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This for us has become a template today that everyone who desires to go about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil must ensure that like jesus he is anointed with the holy ghost 
and with power are we together that it takes more than a sincere desire to help the oppressed it takes more than a sincere desire to glorify jesus the wickedness that has plagued lives and destinies and families it takes more than a well-intentioned heart that men must be empowered by the holy ghost to be able to make any kingdom sense as far as the revelation of jesus is concerned the holy spirit has largely been misunderstood by so many people we have reduced him to just a pentecostal phenomenon reduced him for many people just to praying in tongues and you know all kinds of charismatic manifestations and that's the end of it so to the average believer when you talk about the holy spirit in their minds they just think oh that personality that makes people to fall down and shout and that's the end of it and that's the one who empowers people to pray in the spirit and that's the end of it but there is more to the holy spirit let me just by way of summary reveal to you his threefold ministry very quickly number one it's important for you to appreciate that the holy spirit is god the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not one of the seraphs he's not a cherubim he's not one of the 24 elders the holy spirit is god are we together now this is very important you find that in Acts chapter 5 from verse 3 and verse 4. Peter said, Why has Satan filled thy heart to lie against the Holy Ghost? So Ananias and Sapphira, remember the story? They lied against the Holy Ghost. But verse 4, Peter again is speaking and he's saying, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So he equates the Holy Ghost as God. Are we together now? The Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry. Number one, his first ministry is to the entire creation. His ministry is not just to humans alone. No. Way before there was any manifestation of any human being, the Holy Ghost was already hovering the uh, across the face of the waters. Remember? Yes. The Holy Spirit has a ministry to creation. He literally is the manifestation of the life of God to creation. I know that biology through the centuries have taught us that the reason why plants and animals are able to thrive well is because of a healthy blend of you know the elements of nature the sun the wind water and this is true in as much as we know but I submit to you by the authority of scripture you leave every other element intact and withdraw the presence of the Holy Spirit the entire life form as we know will die if there is anything alive in the earth biologically and so on and so forth it is because the holy spirit is the life-giving agency of god whether it is to plants to animals to creation hallelujah so the holy spirit has a ministry to the entire creation that is the reason why he will never be taken from the earth and when he's withdrawn from the earth all that will be left in the earth is death and judgment hallelujah the Holy Spirit has a ministry to plants, to animals, to the entire creation. The earth is intact today because of his presence. Number two, the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. If you really want to see the global harvest, you want to see unbelievers saved, you cannot do that in isolation to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible clearly tells us, John 16, where we read earlier, from verse 8 to 11, that he has a ministry to unbelievers the unsaved that when he comes he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and judgment this is a profound miracle that whilst you are preaching as a man of god people are listening to you and the holy ghost is moving through the hearts of men revealing jesus through your messages moving past the frailty of your communication and convicting men of sin of righteousness and judgment no man has enough intelligence to make another man leave his seat and come and stand to declare the lordship of jesus it takes the convicting power of the holy spirit hallelujah yes you will never have people truly saved except you respect his ministry and you allow him walk through you so whilst the preacher is speaking in the midst of our frailty and limitation as far as communication is concerned he's able to move past us and move through us and convict the world of sinners and bring them to the cross 
the holy spirit he is the one who will turn your unsaved son to become a mighty man he is the one who will turn your unsaved spouse he is called the lord of the harvest it is illegal to get into the harvest field and ignore him if you come into a field that is my own when ruth was coming into boaz's farm she had to acknowledge that he was the owner there she didn't just barge into the farm and ignore him even though she started by gleaning but when she saw him she acknowledged him you don't come into a field and ignore the owner the bible calls the holy spirit the lord of the harvest it is impossible especially if you're a minister of the gospel you will never see the global harvest just on the wings of intellect or on the wings of um, technology these things are wonderful but they are barren and impotent except by the command and the endorsement of the lord of the harvest the reason why many people do not see unsaved people saved is because we over depend on intellect we over depend on other resources outside of his person and his power who would have turned saul into paul who had the power to convince that intellectual person by what book would you use to have turned paul saul to become paul only the holy spirit hallelujah the same disciples that denied jesus peter ran away from jesus all the disciples literally ran away these were people who jesus they were not the ones to be crucified just to identify with him they ran away yet when the holy spirit came upon them many of them died rejoicing regardless what happened they would flog peter he would be in the prison and instead of him to think about how to run out of that city he was writing a letter from the prison warning the people to say i've heard that some of you are misbehaving just to let you know that i'm coming as soon as i come out of this prison i'm coming to have a seminar in that your place and correct certain things what passion it has to take the holy spirit when the holy spirit showed up he announced his presence not just by praying in tongues but a harvest of three thousand people in a moment when peter was done speaking by the holy ghost they were so convicted they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for it is unto you to your children your children's children can i tell you we will never see our children our spouses we will never see the nations come to the obedience of the cross if we do not believe in him this is why those who are changing the world from a kingdom perspective are ordinary people people who have come to a point where they have acknowledged that the best of my strength is not sufficient to bring the harvest and you will find ordinary people like reinhard bonke of blessed memory are we together now or tl osborne of blessed memory very frail and simple people you listen to them and their sermons were so you listen to a sermon of a person like billy graham and while he's talking if you ever have a chance to watch his crusades there's nobody charging any atmosphere no instrument playing and you see everybody looking at him you will wonder if these people are receiving anything wait till he makes the altar call and you see people intellectuals all kinds of people that man saved kings he saved atheists sworn unbelievers who caused god to their faces when they listen to him by the power of this spirit if you embrace the ministry of the holy spirit there is no limit to how far he can go to bring unbelievers to jesus hallelujah but for the purpose of our discussion tonight I want to focus on his ministry to believers so the holy spirit has a ministry to the entire creation a ministry to unbelievers hallelujah and then a ministry to believers this is very powerful his first ministry to believers is to provide guidance and direction this is very simple but don't assume you understand what i'm saying the holy spirit was sent by jesus to us to provide guidance and to provide direction why do we need to be guided because we are not we are not omnipresent we are not omnipotent and we are not omniscient the only person who does not need guidance is god and it's because of these three attributes to be omnipresent means you are everywhere at the same time the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence to be omnipotent means you are all powerful not desiring any assistance whatsoever to be omniscient means you are all knowing you do not need to be taught 
nobody lectures God nobody mentors him who will be the lecturer what will be the basis of his qualification it is in his light that we see light hallelujah are we together yes when he became a man Jesus he learned because he submitted himself to the frailty of men but as God he is omniscient hallelujah and because men you and I the greatest of us you you find our limitations intelligently documented in first Corinthians 13 it says though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love I am nothing are we together and then Paul begins to speak and then he makes a very profound statement I think in chapter 8 or 11 one of those he says we see in part and we prophesy in part of verse 8 or 11 or there about from verse 8 downwards we see in part do you know what that means that means the greatest of us is still limited in terms of knowledge there are things we do not know thank you verse 9 that is the reason why we need to be guided why do we need to be guided by the spirit because there is a way that cement right onto a man and the bible says the end thereof you can be walking in a wrong path for two decades only to find out you've been wasting your time and god does not want you to be on that journey of risking and wasting your life and destiny because destiny is a function of time whatever you give your time to you give a portion of your life to so if you were if god is giving you the privilege of living 90 years and you waste 30 years in confusion you see that it will take the grace and the mercy of god for you to recover and some of you even before you got born again you were already far off in terms of confusion and error now that you are saved some even got saved late you need the one who is able to guide you and to direct you hallelujah Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, In all your ways acknowledge him, help me, and he shall direct your path. In this wicked world, he shall direct your path. He's the one who knows the hearts of men. Direct your path. He's the one who knows the region where your blessings reside direct your path if you choose your own direction by yourself you will make the mistake of lot lot used intellect to choose a place and he went to settle near sodom by the time abraham came to save him he was in the center of sodom many of us if god were to allow you choose you would get up and just imagine i should be in america or i should be in uk or i should be in lagos or i should be in abuja only the spirit of the living god who has access to the mind of god knows he can look at the archives the blueprint of your destiny where are you supposed to be at this point and he will direct you with precision you see when destiny is location dependent anywhere cannot be the zone for actualizing destiny did you hear what i said yes sir there is always a location component to destiny actualization you can have a sincere vision but if you are in a wrong location the holy spirit he can hold your hand and direct you and through the foolishness of your obedience to his leadership as frail as you look your life will keep navigating paths until you find yourself stationed in an enviable position. Some of us have followed him with childlike obedience, not even knowing where he was taking us, but believing that he was knowledgeable enough to command. You have given your attention to things with lesser knowledge. Why not trust him with your life? There are many young people who are trusting God for direction in life. Apostle, I don't know what I want to become. You don't just go and sit down and type, what should I become? Enter. No, you're, you're, you're going to ruin your destiny because there are demon spirits out to destroy your life. Are we together now? And you've heard me say, not every open door is a door of breakthrough. Even the prison has a door. So just because a door is open, be, verify where you are entering. Even if it's a prison you are entering, it, it has to happen by an open door. There are many people who have who have handled open doors to their peril their shame and their disaster listen there are some of you by reason of this teaching this is already a word for you that you will ruin your family your wife and your children if you do not stay and say holy spirit guide me i have i have done everything i know to do but it is clear that i am limited in my knowledge today i want to go to canada 
tomorrow i hear something about canada that does not sound nice and I say, look let me change this thing to uk next tomorrow i say i want to go to lagos and even in lagos now i say i think the island is there opportunities and then next to, you see your life you will give yourself heart attack for nothing the holy spirit are, are you getting me now he can direct you as a man of god waiting for people to just give you blind theories that are not proven will frustrate you you will find yourself begged in a place that is completely anti your destiny the holy spirit can guide us the holy spirit can direct us number two what is the holy spirit's ministry to the believer the holy spirit is the revealer of the will and the word of god this is very powerful and this is profound the holy spirit can reveal the will of god and reveal the word of god to the believer the holy spirit is also called the spirit of revelation everything that has to do with light insight and revelation resides within his office you cannot ignore the person and the ministry of the holy spirit and expect to have access to insight scriptural insights and prophetic insights because the bible says he will show you things to come hallelujah scriptural insights look at this please look up this bible you see as much as it's a historic book if the only thing you do is to just read it like a novel you will not find anything the only thing you will find there is just a compendium of conflicting statements at the end of it you will join the historians to be angry and say these guys are just dumb people who just confused us by documenting this because the bible you see is a prophetic material that it is not just the opening of it that brings light there are scrolls you cannot unlock the scrolls you can only open book it is the holy ghost that can unlock the scrolls but when he unlocks the scrolls verses that are not supposed to make sense start connecting themselves this is what revelation is about there is nobody who has been trusted with the grace for revelation that does not acknowledge the ministry of the holy spirit revelation is beyond the realm of intellect intellect only supports your understanding but believe me if you do not respect the holy ghost as a preacher get ready for empty pews in this end time because the holy spirit is the one who opens up the mysteries in this book one scripture to another one scripture after another day before yesterday i went to bed preparing to come the night before i came here yesterday now day before yesterday into yesterday i just had a little nap and in that nap someone a radio was playing and a very powerful prophetic song was playing through that radio i've not even sang it i'm waiting till i go and then i'll sing it for my people this is how some of these songs we receive come in you see i can't even remember it so don't even tempt me i just recorded it and left it there now you will be surprised that these songs will come and they will become another ladder of revival and you'll be wondering how do you do it the holy spirit it is not the wisdom of men ladies and gentlemen yes there is a limit to what you can do there are many sermons you see me teach i see them in visions and dreams in the place of prayer i just see the topic and the lord says this is what to direct the people and when we get up the world is clapping we are wise enough to know that this is the one the spirit of god the one holding our hands and doing all the supernatural extraordinary things that are happening the holy spirit is the spirit of revelation he can show you one insight from scripture and open up your heart and don't say i'm not a preacher how about you a businessman the bible says and i will give you the treasures of darkness remember darkness is a place of haziness your vision is not clear it is only the holy spirit who can reach down into darkness and tell you you want to prosper in lagos do this do that it does not make sense but in that childlike obedience you begin to rewrite your narrative hallelujah you believe that the holy spirit is the spirit of revelation you need him revelation from scripture and prophetic insight into what your destiny is going to be about i shared with you for those of you who were here in the morning how that the holy spirit gave me one instruction about a, a decade and a few years ago that i obeyed with childlike faith that became the ladder to him announcing me to the nations let me tell you 
there is there are formulas that can guide us into success but everybody's destiny is like a dna it's only the whole what one person did to succeed you would do it and you will fail woefully hallelujah somebody may have had the courage to just walk up to a destiny helper and say i need help and the man will say i like you because god directed him and the person can just give him 10 or 100 million naira go and start a business so when the person is doing a seminar he will say look i this is my story i walked up to somebody you go and walk up to somebody when you are not directed especially in this time where people are afraid of kidnappers and all of that you see that now the power the result happens because he said so you go and meet somebody and the person will say am i related to you no they will arrest you and that can begin the beginning of trouble in your life so these are not the days of blindly copying people and say because this is what men are doing you have to go to him and say you are the spirit of revelation what is the blueprint for my life for god's sake please listen to what i'm telling you what is the blueprint unique to my own life unique to my own life please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry for a baptism of the spirit of revelation go ahead and pray go ahead and pray lord i'm not ready to make foolish decisions in this sensitive moment of destiny spirit of the living god you have guided ordinary men to great lives and destinies i pray and i cry outside are you praying lay your hands on your head and ask the lord to give you a revelation open up scripture to me open up by prophecy reveal the blueprint of my destiny let it not be that i'm wasting my time in lake us, whereas my destiny is in the US whereas my helpers are in the UK let it not be that I'm in UK whereas I should be back in Nigeria spirit of the living God you are the revealer of the will of God ah you are the revealer the business I am doing did I just decide to do it or did it come as prophetic insight please pray especially if your life has been tied you are in a, a t-junction in destiny not knowing whether to go left or to go right this is where great men are bought destiny because it takes the holy spirit to guide you you can do well for 20 years and fear of for one year and that begins you will destroy your ministry overnight spirit of revelation help me more love keep praying more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love is someone pray more power more of you in my life more love more hallelujah hallelujah you are a minister of the gospel here and you are praying and say god announce me without the spirit of revelation you will only disgrace yourself before the world in one month you will preach every revelation you have and you will not have any other thing to say the spirit of the living god and the spirit of revelation is responsible for freshness I, I preach an average of say three to five messages every week on average you can't be faking this no it has to be by the spirit to maintain newness and freshness for many years hallelujah yes most of us have rejected that revelatory dimension of the holy spirit call on to me is it in your bible and i will answer for god's sake i will show you great and mighty things 
this is a generation that does not understand the value of his presence we are always in a rush wanting to be seen see the secret of relevance is to learn to stay lord should i pursue this was the secret of great men in the bible they were not careless with decisions don't assume that this is the business god wants you to do don't assume ask questions and stay till he answers it's better to make only five decisions in your lifetime but let them be decisions that were directed by god it will be enough to give you a great destiny than to have 200 decisions and 190 of them are decisions in the flesh are you ready to endure that kind of pain the spirit of god is responsible for revelation someone after this conference you need to go and have a day or two for a retreat and that the theme of that retreat is the next level of destiny stay with god and cry and say lord you created me i'm tired of roaming around i just got a job after one month they threw me away i've been in lagos and i don't even know no job no friends no nothing my life is just moving god you did not create me to be a non-entity like this hmm. don't forbear with failure if things are not working don't just laugh go back and verify lord what is it is it that i did not hear you and take responsibility hallelujah a few days before we start in abuja i went back to pray again and said lord i believe you spoke to me i verified but please let me cry one more time is it me in the flesh or is this you and if you say you are not the one my hands are off i don't care what the world says hallelujah are we together the spirit of revelation learn to ask god questions you see, I told you, prayerlessness is pride. If you are not one who is given to prayer, it's pride because you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the help of God. One of the greatest expressions of humility is to be prayerful. That you can go and inquire of the Lord. I am frail, oh God. If you depend on my wisdom, I will mislead people. If I depend on my knowledge, I am limited. What is your blueprint? And God says, because you have sought me, come, let me show you. And he will show you things about your life. You will just emerge like an eagle. And men will look at you and marvel and wonder. By what wisdom are you able to do this? If we're together, say amen. amen. Let me give you one more ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer. And then we'll pray. The Holy Spirit is responsible for the empowerment of believers the holy spirit is responsible for spiritual empowerment the holy spirit is responsible for spiritual empowerment acts 10 38 how god anointed jesus with the holy ghost in other words jesus was anointed with the holy ghost and with power if the Holy Ghost does not come into your life you will never be able to access genuine spiritual power people have asked me questions time and again and say what is the secret usually that's the question what is the secret behind the hand of God upon your life and I tell them look at me this is all of me you are seeing it's not like there is a part of me sitting somewhere this is all of it can an ordinary man do these things that you see? No. It is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This is what makes ordinary men to do extraordinary things. How do you speak over someone's life and say in the name of Jesus, let doors open. And then the person returns and says, look what has happened. Can a man do that? No. Nicodemus taught us already. He came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 2. And he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Except. Except. Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. Angel Gabriel comes to visit a young virgin. And tells her that she is going to be with child. How be it without a man? And she was surprised. She asked a very intelligent question. How shall these things be? Give us verse 34 again. Seeing that I know not a man. I always use this scripture to provoke people. How shall this business thrive? Seeing that I do not have a helper. 
how shall i rise from my lowly estate seeing that this is a family of 12 people and i am even the last child how can i arise from this family like you have said the answer is in verse 35 it says the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you that is the secret that is the secret to an extraordinary life an extraordinary business an extraordinary destiny hallelujah i believe what i'm telling you i'm not just teaching it as a sermon it is my life you have no idea what the holy ghost can do as far as connecting the dots to your destiny is concerned he will pick someone from end to end of the earth and bring them to you if it if it is required for your life and your destiny the victorious life depends on his empowerment this is what someone came to church tonight to do you are a man of god and you have struggled in ministry to a point that your wife is asking you darling are you really called i'm not going to divorce you but are you called because i'm tired of this shame and embarrassment you have said god will heal people said amen nobody was healed you have said people will get miracle jobs people are tired of shouting amen with no results it is not insincerity you may have ignored his ministry Businessmen, intellect is wonderful. The value that you provide is wonderful. But in a spiritual world, you will need more than that to command dominion. Go and ask non-Christians. When they are done with all the board meetings and they do all the simulations and discussions, they go back in the night and consult all kinds of mediums and diabolic means to back that spiritual component has to be there. Because James 2.26 says, For a body without a spirit is dead your business is a body it needs a spirit to make it alive your ministry is a body it needs a spirit components hallelujah. hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me tell you sincerely even these finances that you see please look up this is such a big issue in the life of believers right now these finances there are people who have done everything they know to do this finances is not answering that now there are lazy people but there are hard-working people like Peter they have gone to the seaside they have trained as fishermen they have the correct net they have caught they have thrown their nets and yet they could not catch fish because it is not entirely just a natural thing there is a spiritual side to it hallelujah thou shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power if all it took to prosper in the kingdom were brain work God will not waste his power but he's telling you if you are a slave under Pharaoh teach me the creativity that will make Pharaoh give you money value only works when you are when you live in a free world where there is meritocracy and biases and sentiments of men do not exist at that point the value you bring you bring it to a level playing ground but in a world that has been marred by political biases tribal prejudices you need an advantage in addition to your value are we together if you are a prisoner under Pharaoh and he has vowed that you will be a slave teach me ladies and gentlemen the business intelligence that will suddenly make Pharaoh bow to you when he has vowed that you will be a slave even the straw that helps you to make the, the, the building, he will take it away from you. At that point, oh, what you need is beyond creativity. You need God to come in with nine plagues and even one more to dislodge Pharaoh and then allow him to dismiss you with gold that you will use to build the house of God with. Hallelujah. Because there are many business people who when we teach like this, they just say, no, no, leave this teaching, this Holy Spirit part to preachers when you are about to prophesy breakthrough i can say amen in today's world it is spiritual in any way you will see somebody who just got a job and by the next day his legs start swelling and he just hit it in a stone but the swelling does not stop in one month they will tell you they want to amputate both legs don't tell me it was just a stone there are wicked forces that exist and if you don't believe it keep living in this wicked world sooner or later you will collide with 
wickedness the bible calls them arrows that fly by day noisome pestilences destructions that waste in noonday and if you must live a victorious life you need the empowerment of the holy spirit there are two reasons why we need the power of the holy spirit reason number one is because you cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom in the strength of the flesh no matter who you are no matter how intelligent you are no matter how exposed you are this is a spiritual kingdom you cannot ignore spirituality and excel in life life is spiritual more than intellectual more than sociological it took the spirit realm to birth the physical realm that you see hebrews 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear the immaterial reality is the mother of this material realm hallelujah there are people who have spent decades abroad only to return back looking like the spirit that has kept their families down they will tell you i have been 20 years in america and they return back as though they deported them not 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 even the money to have a single block and you are saying what kind of thing is this that is the devil for you how about people who start rising and it's like there is a spiritual meter in the realm of the spirit the moment you look like you are the horn that is rising to wipe the tears of your family they take you down immediately you find out that someone my head my head and he just dies and they say it was typhoid that killed him you are smart is it really typhoid that killed him no these are spirits that have vowed that nobody will rise when you read zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 please give it to us i hope god is speaking to someone zechariah 1 18 1 8 then i lifted up my eyes and behold i saw how many horns a horn is a symbol of authority and i said to the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me these are the horns which have scattered your praise your peace and your covenant the bible says they have scattered judah your praise they have scattered jerusalem your peace they have scattered israel your promise these are horns that scatter people's destinies next verse please and the lord showed me four carpenters and he said what are these horns come to do he said these are the horns that have scattered judah please read with me so that no man did lift up his head stop there are you seeing that there are horns no man don't lift up his head but you say apostle i'm doing well even though i'm not prayerful you just continue they are watching you are not the only one watching oh there is a meter in the realm of the spirit when you rise to a threshold in one year that's why you see people rise for decades ceo doing well wealthy with estates and if job could go down in one day you will be joking to believe that the devil if unassisted by the power of god cannot bring you down a man as wealthy as job how can a man lose his estate his children his reputation in 24 hours that is the mundanity of life without the empowerment of the spirit everything can vanish one person empowered by a demon spirit can manipulate a document in your company and you will spend the remaining part of your life dealing with a court case and if you are unfortunate and you have the kind of judge that was in luke 18 that does not fear god or regard men you can't bribe him you can't pray against him hallelujah true story i know a man who had built his company on a property and after about 15 years some boys just got up and i think they found one document true story that something something i think happened between his grandfather who really owned that land and those guys got a lawyer and they wrecked that man's life into pieces they said there was an agreement i don't know if they finished the court case today they have spent money and spent money grounded the business because they they valued it and did all kinds of things and said somebody did not do something that was correct and my goodness you see here eh? if men decide to fight you only god can help you let me say it again if men decide to fight you only god can help you
hallelujah you need empowerment because you cannot achieve the purposes of the kingdom in the strength of the flesh number two darkness is real you need empowerment the realm of the spirit the realm of evil is real this is not to scare you it is the truth jesus himself acknowledged the fact that we live in a world where evil is real and you don't wait until the day it comes to you it may be too late hallelujah may be too late many years ago one night i was praying i was in a period of prayer fasting and then the ceiling of my room suddenly vanished and i saw a vision of this creature this wild creature looking like a dinosaur and he was looking at me with fiery eyes and he made a statement he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and it just vanished there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end someone met me one time and said apostle i want you to pray because i think there's a spirit on my life that makes good things to leave me somebody comes and says i want to see your parents that's the end of it by the next day it looks like a it's as if somebody speaks to his ears and say do you want to die or somebody gives me a job and the moment that happens the company starts going down and the man goes for prayer and they said there's somebody you employed get that lady out of the company and they just come by morning and say young lady you are hereby dismissed no questions we are downsizing you are just a victim but he will not tell you somebody had prayed and said you are carrying bad luck and you brought to their office anything that is not of god this night in the name of jesus the son of the living god any planting any embargo sitting on anybody's life programming evil and pain in the name of jesus he must give up on you finally he must give up on you finally please sit down will soon rise up to pray i'm taking out time to teach like this because this is the most important component the prayer and all of this can happen within minutes you see that this is what you need to take back for some of you this is the missing link to your destiny spirit of the living god i return to you now i see that you are beyond just a pentecostal phenomenon spirit of the living god you are beyond just a prayer language you are the gift of god sent to me to see to it that my life becomes and remains victorious if jesus needed the holy spirit as the son of god then every one of us needs the holy spirit hallelujah do you believe that mama you need the holy spirit it takes more than a motherly sympathy to raise five boys with this age of internet no you will die of high blood pressure for nothing children now will ask you questions you cannot sleep again gone are the days you off a television and everything is off but you off it they own it on their phones and they will ask you questions that as an adult you are saying what is this who taught you what who is bringing this trouble to my house hallelujah there are young people now that will go all it takes is to just watch a two minutes video about scientology or some world religion and they are initiated into all kinds of gangs all kinds of things and they return back and only ask you one question who is god the father the son or the holy spirit and now you stand there and say i never asked my pastor this question what kind of a child are you that at this age you're already asking me this question welcome to a complicated world that needs the holy spirit to be able to create a synergy out of it hallelujah praise the name of the lord i hope you believe what we're sharing 
there are some of you you began projects till now till now you've not been able to complete it now i'm not i'm, I'm just challenging you because grace is coming on you tonight it takes more than intelligent architecture and engineering to put a structure on the ground and to finally zinc it to put a ribbon around it and to cut it in your lifetime in this wicked world only god helps men there is a name god is called ebenezer ebenezer he is the helper of men if god does not he said uzziah prospered because he was mightily helped someone shout help me lord help me. one more time say help me lord You wake up in the morning in this same Lagos and you pass breakthrough and favor from morning till night but none of it comes to you no tonight is the night you are receiving your portion you are receiving your portion in the name of Jesus do you believe this make up your mind that you will not share the grace tonight leaving anything that should come into your destiny no it must come this night that you came to receive you came with your heart open jesus left us the holy spirit now you understand isaiah 32 and verse 15 until the spirit be poured upon us like rain what farmer becomes so proud and says i don't need rain I don't need water i am so intelligent my soil is loamy soil my seed is very good rain you can go places i show you a farmer who is about to be disappointed no matter how serious that farmer is that rain becomes an advantage is that true that even if you decide to plant in dry season you will have to simulate a system get water to that farm until the spirit be poured upon us be poured upon joshua selman be poured upon koinonia be poured upon new heritage baptist church be poured upon your children be poured upon your destiny be poured upon your business the bible says watch this now i hope you know that the holy spirit does not just come upon men the holy spirit is also master over darkness the first mention of darkness in the bible it was him that collided with that darkness so you introduce him to your pain introduce him to the causes introduce him to the yokes holy ghost there is a cause that is keeping people down i hand you over to that cause that familiar spirit that has taken away the glory of man in my life and my family ah, i hand you over the Bible says there was darkness 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 and the Holy Ghost hovered around the face of the deep ah, hand him over to that disappointment hand it to him I'm tired of carrying this pain I'm tired of carrying this shame carrying this disappointment this embargo on my head spirit of the living God I hand over my life in its entirety to you I hand over my husband to you I don't know what is happening to him it looks like he's changing for the bad I hand over my wife I hand over my children I hand over the ministry the business is going down I hand it over to you you are a master over darkness hallelujah in the name of Jesus hallelujah please hear me tonight God is going to do four things in this place very quickly number one we are going to have a few minutes to pray an ancient doors tied down but not by God that in the place of prayer those doors will be scattered and open once and for all 
hallelujah number two i'm going to be praying for men and women people in this place the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob all these manipulations of darkness sitting over anyone's destiny i am telling you by god who sent me tonight it must give up on you finally <laughs> hallelujah number three i'm going to be praying for the sick i told you yesterday your body needs to be healthy for you to remain if your body is broken down i don't care what the name of the situation is it is the devil trying to destroy your life hallelujah and then number four we are going to be agreeing together that beginning from tonight in prophecy that god will elevate you elevate your children as as i pray over your prayer requests this is what i want you to agree please for the next 15 or 20 minutes let be spiritual and be discerning do not allow your word come and then by carelessness for some of us god is redeeming 20 years tonight redeeming 15 years tonight the, the years that the locust has eaten the canker war god is redeeming it tonight hallelujah If you can stand, stand. Hallelujah. Do you know, there are some of you here, the ministry that God has given you this night, the mantle of your destiny. Listen, listen. This is not everybody, but believe me, there are people, it's time the excuses you are giving is over. It's time for certain graces to find you. I'm talking of destiny fire, the kind of fire that will ignite your life and with it you will ignite the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? One prayer point and then we'll allow the Lord to just descend upon us. Father, everything you intend to do in my life tonight, let it happen by the Spirit. Someone pray, everything, everything, everything. The fire you have designed to fall upon me, oh God of heaven, let it fall. The deliverance, the healing. Change my story. Change my name from Jacob to Israel, Saul to Paul, Cephas to Peter. hallelujah 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 praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord I'm seeing fire this is what I'm seeing the Lord is showing me I'm seeing fire just moving across and hear me the Lord is saying to me that the fire that is falling now is not just for individuals there are individuals representing families so you will be surprised that what is happening to you is reaching your loved ones where they are right now i decree and declare every family here that has been bound by witchcraft bound by apocatos you help them in the name of jesus be delivered now let that apart step let that fire engulf you right now in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah now please hear me because of space we are not going to be able to bring people out but i want you to help them hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing the feet of people and the lord is telling me the number 11 
that everybody in your family has been tied down help that lady they can't seem to be able to move but right now fire is falling everywhere inside and outside i lose you now i lose you now i lose you now i lose your siblings help that woman please my god help them please they lose now 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 Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is. Hear me, every covenant that has tied your destiny that said you will not move forward right now as I'm speaking, I'm seeing the hands of men catching fire. Let that fire descend on you now. I set you free now. I set you free now. I set you free now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit shame and reproach. Watch this. There are many of you here. You look at your life. The only thing men can see is shame and reproach. There's no honor and there's no dignity. And it's the enemy that has done this. Whether you are a gentleman or a lady. Whether you are an elderly person or a young person. Every embargo of shame hanging on your destiny here at new heritage baptist church right now be released 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 open your mouth in one minute and declare that i am finally free from anything that is not of god is someone praying here Hey, Finally, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Free indeed. Up the balcony, are you praying? The overflows. Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is ministering to me that there are some of you here. He has been guiding you for years because you are the one ordained to be a deliverer. Watch this now over your family. And the Lord is saying the grace to make this happen. You may be the least, but there is an anointing now. Not everybody. Lord, I don't know where they are, but everybody destined to be a deliverer. Receive that anointing now. Receive that grace now. Please help them. Receive that anointing now. Help this woman, please. Receive that anointing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that anointing now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. No, don't be tired. This is your destiny. You must testify. Now, hear me, please. The Lord is asking me to minister to people. You have seen repetitive patterns. Something happening to your mother happening to you. Something happening to your brother happening to you. The blood of Jesus was sent for this very reason. He said for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy all the works of darkness i want to break patterns right now you saw poverty from your parents is still working in your life you saw all kinds of things that women don't stay in their marital homes and even though you are a christian the devil now wants to plague you anyone here under the sound of my voice every repetition of patterns right now the anointing is coming on you be free now be free now! Be free now! Be free now! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When 
Joshua in the Bible when Joshua led the nation of Israel help those under the anointing and they brought down Jericho Joshua left a course there and said cause be anybody who tries to rebuild he will build it on the blood of his firstborn and complete it on the blood of his lastborn when you read the Bible in later years there were people who came not even knowing what had happened and they tried to rebuild Jericho again they lost their firstborn and they lost the lastborn it's not your fault that you came from the family you have come from so let me speak over your life if there has been any pronouncement and anything that is not of God now you are a Christian you are a child of God I don't care if they worship idols I don't care if they worship deities if they bury people alive the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creation therefore I declare let the blood separate you forever separate you forever separate your dreams forever separate your destiny forever hallelujah whether you come from the east or you come from the west or you come from the north the middle belt wherever i am saying it again if there is anything that has been deposited to the earth and by bloodline you are a victim of it and it's affecting you today i call upon the one who died and rose again shedding his blood for the remission of sins be free from it now hallelujah they saw a man who was born blind and the disciples asked Jesus a question who sinned that this man was born blind was it him or his father there was something Jesus had taught them how can his father's sin be the reason for his blindness Jesus would have said you are wrong but he said neither but that the glory of the Lord should be made manifest physically speaking if you are a multi-millionaire chances are excellent that your child will also be a millionaire because you are not a wicked father you will put structures in place am i right on that everybody transfers what you are carrying if that is true physically it will be naive for you to believe that spiritually that is not true there can be an exception but not by folding your arms remember what i taught you yesterday because it is finished in christ does not mean it to automatically be administered to you it takes you engaging the word with understanding to appropriate it in your life hallelujah there are some of you by now based on the prophetic blueprint you should not be at this level and listen the devil you know what delay is delay is not stagnation there are two different things they are all dangerous stagnation is that you are standing in the same position and the only thing growing is your age nothing else is growing in your life delay is that your pace relative to the time allotted to your destiny is so slow hallelujah so slow something that god can help you do in one year you will take forever i'm saying this because i want to pray a serious prayer now there are some of you your life has never been straight it took six years for a four-year course are we together now a job that you have to do your verifications in three days they did yours in six months it is not normal don't sit down and just smile and say everything is all right because it is not hallelujah and you see the same thing happening a little boy who should complete um, primary school you, you understand what I, or high school something now begins to happen a brilliant that same a, elongated tragedies see the unit of destiny is time you do not have all the time for everything there are some of you right now based on the prophetic blueprint in your life you should have sorted your basic needs and now begun to reach out to people you cannot leave destiny if at age 40 50 you are still looking for rent I'm not insulting you I came here to help you it is an anomaly 
when will you sort your life and now begin to help your siblings it's a spirit that's why you see respectfully speaking parents die and the children have to pay the price before starting their own life especially in africa so you find in a family of 15 people only one person is able to lift up his head he is any one million but what is that relative to all the people you know i'm not lying and god wants to set you free it's a satanic thing i'm telling you hallelujah there is a spirit in africa that does not allow people to be established early if you are ever established early people look at you and, and say it's not normal at 20 you are already done with school and you have a job no that should not be hallelujah i made up my mind that everything i did not enjoy in my life nobody coming from me will have to suffer it again let me pay the price in christ once and for all hallelujah don't transfer the pain you went through and give another person let it end with you are we together let your child not come and meet you and say mommy somebody appeared to me in a dream and you say they've started coming to you too no no let it end with you let it end with you are we together now in the name of jesus the son of the living god i know someone for five years true story he's not been able to go abroad to meet his wife they just got married a few weeks ago and she had to rush in fact they had to rush the marriage because she was going to school and as she went you know just smiled and thought he would just have his visa stamped in one or two months and join the wife five years now he's not seen his wife except by this they've done everything they've met people they've done whatever it is they still could not trace higher mighty and everything i told the man my friend stop going to the embassy come and flog it out with destiny first the embassy does not care whether you will after 10 years no when you see certain prolonged patterns that don't make sense be spiritual stop wasting your money and wasting your time go and flog it with god first then you can come out is someone learning yeah. there are people here I, I don't mean to insult you but you have been in lagos for decades lagos by any standard even a global standard is a place of plenty where god helps men but there are people whose territory swallows the inhabitants it is strangers that will come and in five months god has helped them and yet there are people who will tell you we are the people whose creativity designed lagos we are the ones who are intelligent and no door opens i'm praying for you again i don't know what embargo has sat on your head but in the name of jesus by the god who has shown us mercy and by the power that raised christ from the dead for you and for anybody you are standing in for i declare you are delivered now you are delivered now hallelujah do you know there are spirits that stop you from identifying those that will be rising so that you are not part of their lives do you know with all due respect and with every sense of humility and responsibility there are people who are in my life today they were in my life before and because of that sacrifice i've made a covenant with myself and my destiny that for as long as i'm alive they will not beg for bread do you know that the god can connect you to strategic people but there are spirits that can make you drive the most important people in your life just before god leaves them and they will forget imagine if judas was just, just patient what is 30 shekels he, if he was patient for just one more week one more week he would have become an apostle one more week he would have become an apostle but for 30 shekels that he did not use there are some of you right now the next ceo the next apostle the next prophet is close to you but there are spirits that will drive you from a relationship with them and when they rise have you heard people who say i know this the minister of this was my friend this one but something kept diverging good people away from your life and will only leave troublemakers in your life anyone in your life right now that is not of god anyone in your life programmed by darkness to cause you pain to recycle sorrow in your life this night in the name of jesus i separate them from you forever i separate them from you forever 
I separate them from you forever. Hallelujah. I used to know a man years ago. And a few years, maybe about two years ago, I had the opportunity to meet him. And I did not know that a particular sensitive office in this nation, he was the one occupying. These are offices that, you know, maybe something like land, that whatever happens, they are the ones, if they don't stamp it, you can suffer no matter how rich you are. And I got to find out that these are the people that God placed there. And he saw me and we're laughing, exchanging pleasantries. And he just made a statement in passing. He said, as, as for you, you just, just find rest. I said, you see the kind of good things that God can bring for people. That someone can look at you and say, are you not the mother that taught me in primary five? For as long as I am alive, you will never beg for bread. There are people like that. But there are other people, especially in old age, you will see that they are alone. And there is nobody, yet they spend their life raising people. Just at the point where the miracle happens, Satan creates something and throws you away. I'm saying that because I'm about to call back your destiny helpers. If there is anyone in your life, please hear me, that has been ordained by God to help you rise or to stay with you, whether in government, whether spiritually, in the name of Jesus, whatever has taken them out of your life, by the mercy of the God of David, may they be restored now. May they be restored now. May they be restored now. Do you believe this? Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray. I'm going to be praying for the sick now. The Lord is asking me to pray for someone. I don't know if it's you or someone related to you. Who is having kidney kidney problem this is i'm talking of a verified a kidney issue just lift your hand where you are i don't know who that person is i want to pray for you because with what i'm seeing if a miracle does not happen this this with what i'm seeing you know, is it's almost as if they are just going the way of the grave but there is power in the name of jesus hallelujah now that we're about to pray please don't tolerate any sickness even if it's headache let it go are we together now remember the scripture i taught you in the morning acts chapter 12 that herod made up his mind to vex certain jews and they caught james and beheaded him and the church kept quiet the bible says when he saw that someone's death pleased the jews he proceeded further to catch peter but the church said will not keep quiet again the bible says and prayers was made by the church unto god for him an angelic assistance came Please lay your hands now. I want to pray for you. We have a few minutes left, but I must pray for you. Whilst you are laying your hands there, be declaring that it is over. I don't care what it is. High blood pressure, cancer, diabetes. You have a death sentence. They said there is something that is eating your womb or growing up in your stomach, your, your organs, prostate cancer. In one minute, speak to it. There is authority in the name of Jesus. They said you are deaf in one ear or both ears. You may never be able to hear, never be able to see, never be able to walk. They say your child is autistic. You are a sickler. Your organs are malfunctioning. Go ahead and pray. I sing praises to your name. Keep praying. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is... My God, the power of God is moving in this place. I sing praises to your name. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is great and great to be praised. 
praise. Where's JDK? Come and sing a song for me. And I see hallelujah. And I see hallelujah. Jehovah. There you are. Oh, there you are. And I see hallelujah. And I see hallelujah. Find a key for hand. Let her sing that song. I want to pray for the sick now. Please, I want you to believe the power of God is in this place right now. I want to pray that devil of darkness is about to leave you right now. And while you are standing, you can stand in for your children also. Worship him in one minute. to pray for you the Lord is healing a woman I'm seeing it in my vision you have had literally the issue of blood you have been bleeding for a long time this thing has caused a serious problem in your body the power of God is touching you right now the power of God is touching you right now now hear me anyone here with any blood related disease whether cancer or HIV anything related to the blood hepatitis in the name of Jesus I stand upon the grace of the angel in this house and I decree and declare every planting that is not by God we flush it out of your body now we flush it out of your body now the Lord is showing me a gentleman you have something that looks like a boil not directly in your armpit but just somewhere here it's like a swelling i don't know what it is but i need to pray for you in the name that is above all names wherever you are by the power that raised christ from the dead be healed now anyone with any growth in your abdominal region i don't care what it is called fibroid whatever help them. my god please help them the power of god is coming on them now Please help them in the name of Jesus help this woman please right now God is removing it removing it now removing it now removing it now you believe me my God is removing it now let that devil leave your body now in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone your relative this is something that has to do with the brain is it a brain tumor or something the lord is show, i'm hearing the name brain like brain tumor i don't know who that person is whether you are stand following online or standing in faith that person will not die i say it again that person will not die we close the gate of the grave and we declare they must live in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord now I'm seeing 
there's someone you have a problem with is it your kneecap this is what i'm saying in the name of jesus your kneecap lay your hands there i decree and declare using her as a point of contact to anyone doesn't matter where you are i'm seeing a woman in fact you have been seeing yourself on a wheelchair this is like a dream you had and you saw yourself sitting on a wheelchair from that time half of you you've started having pain like arthritis in jesus name every planting that is not by my god manifesting as pain in any part of your body especially your kneecap be healed now be healed now be healed now my dear i see you what happened to you you fell from a staircase how long two years huh don't cry darling you are the mother mommy you fell two years ago and you could not walk what where which of the legs my uncle had ligament injury it's tough and they did a surgery for it but the pain is still there and my doctor said i'm his longest patient that you will not be fine he said i'll be fine but i'm his longest patient that he doesn't know why he's not healing the healing is slow can i pray for you yes, place your hand on your stomach father i stretch my hands right now right now by the power that raised christ i release the anointing to this body in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let there be life to you my dear look at me lift it do what i ask you to do just lift it gently hallelujah in the name of jesus christ i declare supernatural perfection for you by the power of the holy spirit and if there is anybody here who is having any bone condition that is impeding your movement i decree and declare let the power of god rest upon you right now in the name of jesus christ is there anyone here with the name abiodun abiodun is there someone with that name i'm hearing the name abiodun and the lord is telling me that he's visiting your family who is that person you just stand where you are because what's your your name is abiodun you are sure this gentleman father every time you speak is because you want to end struggles in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead i use this family as god has revealed as a point of contact any family here that has gone through long-standing issues it comes to an end now <laughs> hallelujah i'm still praying for the sick the lord is showing me someone you are always seeing dead people these are your relatives that have gone but you are always seeing them this is not the spirits of just men made perfect this is a demonic thing i want to pray for you anything trying to call you to the grave by the power that raised christ and right here at this word and prayer conference we close the gate of the grave we close the gate of the grave we close the gate of the grave you shall not die in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now hear me if you are here either for you yourself or for your daughter or your relative you've not been able to take in either as a couple or you know i want you to place your hand on your stomach prophetically i want to pray for you you will marvel and wonder at what this god can do place your hand there can stand in for your wife you can stand in for your sister you can stand in for your brother by all means it doesn't matter how many years by the privilege of God's grace, I can tell you, I have seen people who have been barren for decades that God gave children, God opened up barren wombs. You have seen the testimonies. I want to pray for someone now. For some of you, the kind of medical report they have given you, it's only God that can help you. But I don't care what the medical report is. Do you know? Listen, true story. Many of you who follow the ministry, you've seen. I have seen people who have been pregnant for more than two years how does somebody carry pregnancy the machines show that you are not pregnant but all the signs are there with the bulging stomach a nine month what pregnancy and you carry it for two years and with one prophetic word you go and give birth even after two years let me decree and declare whatever it is 
we respect doctors we respect the medical report they have brought but in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead every mother every father everyone here desiring the fruit of the womb i decree and declare according to genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 according to the time of life by this time next year return with your miracle children by this time next year return with your miracle children in the name of jesus christ dementia forgetfulness this thing is happening to someone already you forget names you are forgetting relatives in the name of jesus christ the bible says god has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind i declare receive a sound mind receive a sound mind receive a sound mind in the name of jesus now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus the son of the living god there is someone the lord just healed you of diabetes you have diabetes you will go and check yourself and you will see that that diabetes is gone forever in the name of jesus christ now in one minute while we bring the prayer request lake and anybody there please help us everybody open your mouth and begin to pray that these egyptians we see today we will see them no more forever is someone praying if you are yet to submit your prayer request can you wave it so that the ushers please ushers help us let's attend to those outside please pray there are still people here who are yet to submit this something more than gold I've got something more than gold something more than gold I've got something more than gold if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world lift your hands and sing it something more than gold I've got something more than gold can we start to pray do we have the request here please stretch your hands towards this request father my own is here visit me visit me please pray and watch the wonder working power of jesus we are praying now in the name of jesus christ someone is praying take away the shame take away the reproach oh god take away the shame you wrote this by yourself pray there is a god that answers prayers For your business for your spouse for your children for your ministry oh pray new heritage in the name of jesus we lay hands upon this in the name of jesus father visit families visit destinies visit families visit businesses visit spiritual lives marriages finances visit academics in jesus name i pray hallelujah do you know why I love to pray on requests like this? 
and and graciously we thank the reverend for allowing this to happen this is the most accurate representation of your desires no matter how much we prophesy we only see in part but being that you wrote this yourself please give us mark eleven twenty four. the bible says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says be anxious philippians 4 8 be anxious verse 6 my apologies 6 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known don't assume god knows let your request be made known i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ on behalf of everybody here and god of heaven we pray that in the name of jesus concerning this prayer request may they be turned to testimonies now may they be turned to testimonies now let there be all kinds of miracles in this place marital miracles financial miracles miracles in your spiritual life career miracles establishment miracles healing miracles deliverances breakthroughs restoration in the name of jesus christ for some of you what you have written here god will need to take some people out of the way for it to be answered by all means may they get out of the way there are people what you have written here god will need to bring people into your life in the name of jesus may they come in there are some of you here what you have written down will need wisdom may the wisdom to actualize this rest upon you you hear me every long-standing issue that has been here for a long time the same way you dropped it in this basket that is how that challenge drops off your life in the name of jesus christ therefore i declare that these egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever now i want to speak over your life and i want you to please i want you to please listen this is the final stage of this impartation and then you will i want to declare favor upon you and i want you to believe it the grace for favor is real and it can be transferred in the name of jesus even at these times that we live in there are many of you who need this grace for favor as a bailout system in the name of jesus may my god who is also your god release that grace upon you hallelujah now if you came with any point of contact any document whatever it is just lift it prophetically i want to speak over it once and for all don't worry if you don't have anything you can just stand in faith anything at all you must come and testify on this altar i decree and declare the works of your hands whether it's your cv your certificate i don't know what has come upon it that is bringing negative reports negative results but in the name of jesus let an anointing come upon it now let an anointing come upon it now for some of you these documents you are lifting go and bring results with them the photos of your family members who are lifting may god visit that family in the name of jesus whatever it is you desire as touching these points of contact that is consistent with the will of god may god make it happen for you in the name of jesus may god make it happen for you and for those of you who have applied for jobs applied for projects 
and yet you've not been attended to in the name of jesus let the book of remembrance for your sake be open this night let it be open this night in the name of jesus hallelujah finally there are people here whose spiritual lives have gone down you need to receive this impartation there are people who you want to pray but the grace is not there five minutes ten minutes and you are tired you are weary the grace to travel until you contact power is not there there are those who want to study the word but there are all kinds of distractions i hope you know for everything you have shouted amen to if it's minus your spiritual health you did not receive much i hope you know that hallelujah in order of priority the richest impartation the tonight is that which makes for a robust and an effective spiritual life there are some of you the grace to fast is not there if you are not fasting you can stay a whole day without eating but the moment you say i want to fast by nine you are sweating already no that is an attack you can't be strong that way are we together yeah the discipline to grow spiritually to study materials to submit yourself to learning in the name of Jesus the fire upon your altar that has gone down let it be reignited now prayer fire be reignited now what study fire be reignited now hear me Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The Bible says, and on that Lord doth he meditate day and night, that he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaves does not wither. Hallelujah. I pray for you, any wrong association misleading you, pushing you away from the things of God after this conference be restored to the right relationships Amen. hallelujah if the call, the call of God is upon your life you know you are being trained by God there is a call a ministerial call upon your life and yet you do not know how to even navigate your way i want to pray for you the unction and the mantle there is a generation that must serve god generationally i'm not talking about a few people out of a crowd of many in the name of jesus everyone who came here trusting god for an upgrade in grace that there are certain anointings and graces you so desire i stand as one who has been helped by god and i declare unto you the graces you so desire receive them now 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 in the name of jesus christ My apologies for stretching you in one minute whether you belong to this church family or not I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray for New Heritage Baptist Church pray like you are praying for your own church pray like you are praying for your father your mother your children go ahead pray oh the grace here will not die someone is praying pray for the youth the eldership the pastorate pray for the angel over this house his children the wife the family lord keep them untimely death is far from this church members will not be buried anyhow in the name of jesus increase on all sides pray for the youth robust and vibrant serving the lord pray for missions in the name of Jesus Christ, soul save. Pray for every family that makes up the New Heritage Baptist Church. Let grace rest upon them, favor upon them, fire upon them.
for in jesus much less name we have prayed in jesus much less name we have prayed before i make the final declaration over your life one last time as we wrap up this conference i want to give somebody an opportunity to make it right with jesus this is the ultimate reason why we are gathered please be seated for a minute you will always find in every congregation let me have your attention please men and women who are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity to make it right with jesus i am determined to make it right with jesus perhaps you were here and you were not convicted enough to make that decision sincerely or you were invited today and now on hearing me speak by the spirit the lord jesus is convicting you whether you are making this as a first decision or you are rededicating your life to jesus there are so many people outside i want to make a request those who are within this auditorium i'm going to count one to five very boldly without any sense of shame or fear i want you to stand and i'm going to ask you to come and stand in front even though the space is limited when it is full you will stand remaining wherever you are and for those who are outside all the overflows i will request that you move forward to the front of whatever section you are in now and then those online right there in your home watching by television i want you to indicate you lift your hand and you pray the prayer that follows shortly after now so wherever you are i need jesus i want to make it right i want my life to count i begin my counting one to five please stand up boldly without any sense of shame and fear come to the front god bless you come to the front new heritage let's celebrate them come two don't sit back when the holy spirit is telling you to stand and come hallelujah three those outside make sure they are coming young and old male and female come to jesus four one last count and we're done hallelujah hallelujah now praise god for all of you those up those here and those in all of the overflows i want to salute you for making jesus lord of your life somebody help the little children so that they understand what they are doing praise the name of the lord do we have somebody to help them praise the name of the lord now please let me have your attention just for a minute and then you can feel it a little later thank you for making this noble decision the bible says as many who um he will in no, who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i want to lead you to make this most noble decision the wisest decision any man can make in this side of god's kingdom please lift your right hand high above your head i see you all of you at the overflows and then those outside say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my lord my savior and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb let me pray for you now heavenly father thank you for these precious people they have come declaring your lordship over their lives i pray in the name of jesus christ that you honor their confessions of faith and by the authority of scripture we call you bona fide recipients of the life of god from tonight the grace to live the victorious christian life is imparted upon you you go for whatever and backward never i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus the power to live a victorious life is released upon you in jesus matchless name now you'll be given a card there is a card you're going to be given by the counselors please do well to feel some of our little children help them feel it or you can just carry them somewhere and let them understand what they've done and for those of you who are here and outside may the lord bless you please feel it legibly make sure you leave your contact in case they want to reach you hallelujah
may the lord bless you when you are done please submit it to a counselor and then you are back to your seat praise the lord have you been blessed tonight <laughs> hallelujah one last time i declare over your life that from the beginning of this conference up until now everything god has declared upon you remains permanent and that which you have received tonight remains permanent the testimonies that begin to follow in the name of jesus will cause a praise from your life and will bring many to the saving knowledge of jesus and as for this great church you will only go from glory to glory may the lord bless you by this time next year everyone here will still be alive everyone here will still be strong every family here will still be intact the only difference is that you would have risen greater than you are now may the lord bless you in jesus name we pray thank you in the name of jesus ask him to speak to you declare that your heart is opened receptive ever willing to learn even by his spirit someone pray father visit me visit me let your light indeed rest upon my heart for in jesus matchless name we have prayed speak to our hearts oh god and we pray that you will bless us indeed let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let age-long captivities bow to the name of jesus and i pray that everyone who is connected or everyone who is here represented will return back with a marvelous testimony for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen please be seated hallelujah thank you so very much let's go straight to the word of god two scriptures and then i'll begin to teach um just to let my voice again with um, reverend and the leadership of the church to remind you that the sessions continue is a long span of um, teachings i only have a short session out of the whole thing so commit yourself to finish up the entire uh, span of the prayer and the teaching weekend the week it's a week there week long activity and so uh, my sessions only represent a small pie bigger the whole program so please do well to commit yourself as much as you can we still are here tomorrow morning i understand and then my final session tomorrow night matthew 4 16 matthew chapter 4 and verse 16 the bible says the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadows of death light is sprung up if that is you shout a loud amen the second scripture john chapter 8 and verse 32 john 8 32 it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free i'll read it one more time and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free for those of you who have followed our teachings closely i think in the last one month um it's been a burden in my heart as god has granted me the grace to travel teaching on this very subject of light because i believe that our excelling in the kingdom depends on the kind and the quality of the knowledge that we have hallelujah no believer is truly going to manifest in experience the power the grace the glory of god in ignorance in fact even if you act action in ignorance is not faith what gives your action credibility is that it is acted based the action is based on understanding i submit to you that so many people across the body of christ are very ignorant as to the way the system of the kingdom works now the church of the lord jesus christ has very sincere people men and women 
sincere family sincere ministers of god sincere businessmen but not many people have taken out time to really understand the requirements for an excelling life so our christian experience is largely full of gaps and we hope that we will stumble across information or access to some kind of light that can help us produce beauty and color and you see that's not the way it works hallelujah Amen. first timothy chapter 2 please from verse 1 to 4 very profound scripture from paul first timothy chapter 2 please give us from verse 1 to 4 the verse of emphasis is verse 4 but let's start from verse 1 first timothy 2 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty, verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Let's read verse 4 together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Who will have all men to be saved? and to come on to the knowledge of the truth one more time who will have all men to be saved and to come on to the knowledge of the truth so i'll be teaching uh, today and tomorrow and the title of my teaching is ye shall know the truth hallelujah so the bible here says that there are two principal desires in the heart of god number one that all men be saved when it has to do with salvation there are many dimensions captured in salvation healing is an aspect of salvation deliverance from oppression is an aspect of salvation breakthrough restoration but specifically salvation from sin from hell from death and the grip of satan the translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light the kingdom of his dear son this is what the bible is saying here that god desires for all men regardless tribe regardless gender regardless your social pedigree he desires that all men be saved and then in addition to being saved this immediately tells you that what you call the new birth experience is not the whole experience it only ushers you to begin the journey of your spirit work are we together now when we believe that all it takes is to give our lives to jesus as we say and we come there we are going to live very frustrating and ineffective christian lives this is the experience of many people when you say those who are saved if you know you've confessed jesus as your lord and savior most people will stand up but if you ask how many people are truly living a life of purpose victory grace enjoying their christian experience and how many people have seen that which is written become true in their lives very few people will rise up you see that so the bible says god desires number one that all men be saved and then number two that all men come on to the knowledge of the truth Onto the knowledge of the truth that means you can be saved and not know the truth you can be saved genuinely saved and not know the truth the truth about your victory in Christ the truth about how faith works the truth about the devil the truth about God the truth about life are we together the truth about your health the truth about your destiny he says that the moment a man takes that initial step to make Jesus Lord of his life, your next assignment, as far as manifesting the victory of the kingdom is concerned, is to begin to pursue truth. And when Jesus was speaking, he said, sanctify them by thy truth. He says, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Hallelujah. Conferences like these are designed to be number one times of intense prayer where we submit ourselves to pray. But conferences like these are a feast of light where God brings life applicable truths. Truths that will serve as ladders and help us to ascend heights not just in the spirit but in life and in destiny. You can sample two believers, one by my left and the other by my right. 
and all of them will testify that they have been saved yet you look at the quality of their lives spiritually financially even within the context of society and you find out that one on one side may be living a very defeated christian life a life that does not give a true representation of the victory that is in christ whereas the other one is living such an excelling life a life that compels praise Maybe I should tell us that it is important for us to know that our results and our excelling in the kingdom is important for God. Are we together now? If you do not know this, the, the passion to press to see your life rise to a higher point of excellence may not be there. Let me give you three or four scriptures. Number one is Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. Ye are the salt of the earth, he says. But if the salt have lost its sever, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 14 says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all who are in the house. Final verse, Let your light so shine before men. You can read it with me that they may see your good works and you see that now they will not glorify your father if they do not see your good works so you truly want God to be glorified is more than singing it in a special number singing be glorified as a song is wonderful but when your life does the singing it becomes a more powerful rendition are we together that when men see your good deeds they will glorify your father which is in heaven scripture number two galatians 1 24 simple but profound scripture galatians 1 24 let's read it together ready one to read and they glorified god in me one more time and they glorified god in me so god can be glorified in and through a man that your life becomes an epistle literally an epistle that when people look at your life they are compelled through the workings of the spirit in your life to give glory to god hallelujah are you ready for the third scripture ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 ephesians 3 and verse 10 let's read together ready one to read to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god so the bible tells us that the revealers of the wisdom of god are not spirits somewhere they are not angels somewhere it is the very church of the lord that is saddled with the responsibility of manifesting the manifold or multifaceted wisdom of god there is a level of wisdom that should emanate from the church are we together the bible calls it the wisdom of god final scripture john chapter 1 6 and 7 john chapter 1 is god helping us already john chapter 1 6 and 7 i'll read verse 6 then we'll read verse 7 together this is the universal mandate of every believer it doesn't matter if you are a pastor you are a businessman you are a career person you are a family person does not matter the geography of your assignment this right here should be the creed of every believer there was a man sent from god his name was john please read with me verse 7 ready one to read the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe there is something called witness of the light witness of the light witness of the light that a man can be the witness of the light that men through the efficacy of your witness might believe that means if my life and your life remains barren impotent we are robbing god of a dimension of glory that he should enjoy are we together now when the light the beauty the grace of god emanates from your life is more than just being a successful person that is too small a reason god will not invest his life invest his blood invest his name invest his holy spirit just to make men successful for the fun of it no 
The Bible says he does these things for his namesake. Hallelujah. Amen. It then means your life is a sermon that was prepared by God. And there was someone who had been mandated to understand and to listen to that sermon. If your life does not reveal the glory and the power of God, there's someone who may never have the opportunity to know God and to give praises to God in and through your life. The meaning of all this is that from tonight in the name of Jesus, your life will stop being an object of shame and reproach. That everything that has made God, men doubt God in your life, it will change in this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. He desires that all men be saved. So you see, when a believer is not saved, trying to give that individual or when an individual is not saved and you are trying, no matter what you do to an individual as an addition to improving his life, if it comes before salvation, you are wasting your time on that individual. The profiting of any other spiritual investment on an individual, it only becomes rich and wise if that individual is a believer are we together that means if you are mentoring somebody who is not even saved in the first place ultimately you are wasting your time because that person is still a bona fide candidate of darkness on legal ground satan has authority to perfect that person are we together the only escape route given officially that translates a man to a realm where it becomes illegal for Satan and any unclean spirit to reach them is salvation. You can pray for an unbeliever who is sick and he will be healed. You can minister deliverance to an unbeliever who has all manner of demonic oppressions. You can counsel an unbeliever, but all these will prove to be temporary solutions. Before Jesus died, he healed, but he still died. That's to tell you that healing was not the ultimate. Before Jesus died, he still ministered to the sick. But everybody who was healed, everybody who was delivered had to be saved to be free. Are we together now? So in order of priority, your greatest passion for anyone you see is number one, that they be saved. Now, God will heal, God will prosper. But I'm saying every other investment and contribution to the life of an individual is truly from an eternal perspective a waste until that individual is saved. Now, it can provide succor. For instance, if you go and help the less privileged, are we together? If you provide food and bread for them, the Bible says pure religion and undefiled is this, you know, to help the needy and the poor. So there is a place for that. But if you truly love an individual and you want to help that individual, your greatest commitment is to see that person saved. Getting individuals saved is not the issue of, is beyond just the passion to be evangelistic in your approach. Most believers have not learned the value of salvation to an individual's destiny. It's more than just escaping from hell. It's more than just having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It is the only way. Are we together now? Yes. Your official exit from darkness, from the grip of Satan, and every other thing that has come with that darkness. So there are many people who will prefer to enjoy every other provision and blessing in the kingdom except the salvation of their souls. And somehow we have programmed ourselves to believe that if I put three people here and I minister healing for the one and the person is healed, we will rejoice and even roll on the ground and worship God. And I minister deliverance and demons are casted out of this one. And then to this one, I lead him to Jesus in our minds. And subliminally, we have been programmed if we are to arrange those miracles, we usually will give credit to the miracle of healing because it is most charismatic and spectacular. But in this conference, God is helping us to understand that the greatest of the three has been the salvation of that man. As quiet, as basic as it looks, a real translation just happened from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. So God desires that all men be saved. That means if your child is not saved, it is your number one project. If your husband is not saved, don't just think and say, Lord, give him a house. Those things are, are wonderful, but from an eternal standpoint, you see, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if, you do not, if you do not have the lens of the spirit to interpret life, 
you will focus your life and your attention on so many mundane things a man ceases to breathe in about 10 minutes medically speaking and the person is declared dead it does not matter what was working it only finds its value when you are alive are we together there are many people on their way to hell rich but on their way to hell healed but on their way to hell intelligent but they're on their way to hell so just praying for breakthrough and increase and prosperity is these things are all wonderful but verify that the individual is saved first then every other blessing now becomes an added advantage are we together so god desires we're walking that scripture now that all men be saved and whilst you are listening if you've not made how how do you get saved do you know as as simple as the matter of salvation is you will be surprised that the average believer cannot tell you how an individual becomes a believer you are not saved just because you came to church now coming to church increases your your potential to be saved because you have an opportunity to hear the word the gospel preached are we together an encounter with a pastor does not give you eternal life an encounter with a good church does not give you eternal life in fact an encounter with the bible does not give you eternal life this is a book that was produced by a publishing house it's a compendium of historic materials there are many people who are unsaved and they have more bibles than you in their homes some of them are historians some of them in fact their research that gave them phd was around religion and yet they are not saved they know more of bible history than you may know in all your times of ministry together and yet they are not saved so when Jesus came, he made it clear and straight the pathway to salvation. And I want you to just let me two or three minutes. God is helping the church to come into maturity. And I want to tell you without missing words how an individual gets saved before we continue. So that if you have not passed through that route, you can be sure you are not saved. Even if you were crying while the preacher was preaching, you were still not saved. There are people that Jesus credited to, they said they were not far from the kingdom. Standing near my house does not bring you inside my house. Are we together now? There are beggars that hang around very nice houses. It does not automatically qualify them there. So Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3. And he said, Rabbi, verse 2, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He says, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Then Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, ah, How can this be? Can a man enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Then he said, Verse 5, I say unto you again, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now fast forward to verse 16 still speaking to nicodemus he said for god so loved the world john 3 16 that he gave his only begotten son now when you are quoting this scripture with intelligence you cannot say his only begotten son because jesus is no longer his only begotten son he is now the first begotten of we the brethren we are also sons of god now are we together yes so the bible says that whosoever watch this now this blessing is for whosoever, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, American, European, whosoever believeth on him, not on it, believeth on him. You need to believe in a person, not just an information. It takes more than an information. The information is about a person, but your faith must be on that person, Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved can i show you one more scripture romans chapter 10 let's go to verse 10 or romans chapter 10 8 to 10. it's important to make it clear what does it take for a man to be saved biblically but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach verse 9 that if thou shalt confess please say confess Amen. one more time say confess Amen. confess with thy mouth 
So your mouth has a role to play in your being saved. You don't meditate salvation. Are we together? With thy mouth you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt believe with thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So God designed the system for administering salvation such that number one, you will have to acknowledge, you see. The prodigal son came to himself and said, How many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. He didn't have the power to change his status, but he had the power to decide. That one is given to any man. God will not force salvation on you. You cannot, you don't have the power to translate yourself, but you have the power to decide. Are we together? The young boy got up and began to walk back home. That one was within his power. Like when I make the altar call later on, it's within your power to stand up or to leave your seat to come. That one God has given you the power. It's the power of your will. You can use your will and reject Jesus consciously and he will respect your decision. Hallelujah. So God desires that all men be saved. I say this because just because you have sincere people in church does not mean they are saved. It takes more than a, a nice heart and a wonderful, trouble-free individual. That does not equal salvation. There are many people who will not look for your trouble. They really are very sincere people. In fact, wonderful, but they are still going to hell. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, not we are the way. There are many ways, but there is only one. Jesus, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, he says, come to the Father except by me. Jesus also said, I am the door. What does that mean? The authorized access into the kingdom. If you claim you are in the kingdom and you followed another door that is not Jesus, number one, you are in a wrong place. Because if you jump through the fence and you enter my house, you are in my house but you are not welcome, you are most likely a thief. Am I right on that? The way into my house is not the fence. Mm -mm. The door is the authorized access. Jesus also said, I am the good shepherd. He says the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. You need to know all the things Jesus said he was and he is. As far as your salvation is concerned. So Paul was teaching his son Timothy and he says God desires that all men, that includes your spouse, all men, that includes your driver, all men, that includes your workers, all men, all men be saved. And then when salvation the matter of new birth is sorted we can now delve into other areas so you see that salvation is very important but as important as new birth is please let me have your attention as important as new birth is it is not the ultimate of the believers journey it is only an initiation it begins the process of walking in the kingdom are we together the next assignment for any believer that gets saved is not just to keep his Bible and come to church just ordinarily and go back and say, after all, I'm a Christian. There is need for efficiency. So the Bible says the second desire, that means when you are saved, you've satisfied one great desire in the heart of God for you. The second desire is that the same all men, that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. Because you see, this life you have received, and this kingdom that we are part of, excelling in it is knowledge dependent. Please, if you are writing, write that down. That excelling in the kingdom is knowledge dependent. You can fail and fail so woefully that it does not, there, there, does, there will not seem to be anything in your life that is an advantage of eternal life because of ignorance. Your next assignment is to be on a pursuit, a campaign to damage spiritual ignorance. Now, this leads me to the discussion on darkness. Let's talk a bit about darkness. The word darkness is a very interesting word. The first mention of it is found in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis 1 verse 2. 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. It says, And the earth was without form. Watch this now. And void. 
and darkness this is the first mention of the word darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters verse 3 now says and god said let there be light and there was light so from scripture we see that the first assignment as far as bringing beauty and glory to the earth is concerned was to do something about darkness watch this are we together now yes for as long as there was darkness nothing else could happen the issue of man and creation and nature it could not even be appreciated when god came to the scene the first thing he did was darkness you need to go and the moment darkness departed then every other thing could come and that was the first time we began to see the mention and it was good and it was good because darkness was no longer there and it was good god made this in light and it was good the word darkness in scripture connotes many many meanings but two essentially number one darkness is always related to ignorance please write that down darkness according to scripture is always related to ignorance the definition of darkness is the absence of light always related to ignorance number two darkness is always connected to evil so every time you no know, in most cases except for a few exceptions whenever you read about darkness in scripture it talks about ignorance and then number two it talks about evil in its entirety in whatever form or fashion hallelujah and you know from scripture and even from science that in the presence of darkness there are many negative effects for instance darkness affects vision if the lights in this entire auditorium were put off you will not be able to see is that true yes with your eyes sound and correct you will still not be able to see or see properly so darkness affects vision number two darkness affects speed think of what happens to your headlamp in the night assuming you're on your way from any location in lagos to any location and then for whatever reason maybe a fuse or something goes bad and your headlamp does not work it doesn't matter whether you are driving a bentley a rolls royce a golf a bus it does not matter at that point the deciding factor as far as your speed is concerned is not the quality of the make of the vehicle the absence of light can limit you you will have to slow down and hope that you will arrive home safely and may god help you that it's not raining with thunder and all kinds of things are we together darkness affects speed that means when you dwell in the realm of darkness you will crawl your way through destiny and never be able to do anything that is of substance and of worth and this is the case with so many people they have the advantage of days but no accomplishments captured in their days calendar years keep coming and recycling again and again and there is nothing constructive at all but one of the most disturbing effects of darkness is that darkness alters identity in the presence of darkness you cannot really know who is who a light-skinned person may carry an interpretation like a dark person are we together a male can look like a female a, an old woman who deserves respect can look like a child you can mistake in a small child for an adult there is always confusion in the presence of darkness you cannot accord the honor that is due men in darkness that reminds me of the story of jacob that should be genesis 29 when you read from verse 22 it was in darkness that that exchange was that exchange happened having worked for laban for his wife his wife based on his desire was rachel but drama happened because there was darkness remember that story the man got up in the morning when light came and said what is this i really wonder what happened that you, you can imagine what darkness happened i mean darkness happened to that man and in his mind he thought that he was with rachel only for him to wake up in the morning and say what have you done to me did i not serve you for rachel he said you have beguiled me because of darkness darkness can misrepresent you you are a king and a priest but darkness can give you another identity that is far from what god has said you are 
darkness can make you look weak darkness can make you look limited it can alter your identity no wonder the bible says in psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes how many great champions have been bound by darkness look at the madman in gadara that man was a great evangelist but look what the kind of identity till today we do not know his name except we research through history darkness was so much upon him there was no mention of the name his mother gave him only god knows how many people would have been called named after that great evangelist but darkness simply called him the madman in gadara is that a name was the man not healed why did his name change if when we are talking about the man who saved many we still call him the madman in gadara hallelujah darkness can create all kinds of names the woman with the issue of blood huh the crippled man at bethesda darkness gives people names that their parents did not give them that god did not give them what of the name ichabod no mother would name a child like that only one mention of a, a woman who was angry at the situation of her child and named him jabez and the gentleman said no oh that that would just bless me i can't carry this stigma this is not me i'm saying this because for someone here you came for this conference what you see in your dreams and visions is not what is appearing in your dreams and visions and by prophecy that they told you there were certain prophecies upon your life as you were born but there is absolutely nothing like it today in your life a prophecy of glory a prophecy of grace a prophecy of greatness but what is happening in your life now is like that rejected stone people use you to counsel others to say if you must fail don't even be like so 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 and so in the name of jesus i don't know who has carried that shame and that reproach in your life i call upon my god that that reproach must leave your life permanently yeah. hallelujah there was a man in the bible in john chapter 5 are we still together the bible says that man was lying down close to a pool called bethesda for 38 years no friend supposedly no family members didn't a woman give birth to him this is what darkness can do to men left the man alone for 38 years i'm sure people would pass and tell their children who were now adults remember when you were born we passed and this man was here and they say ah, daddy but this man is still there till now and people just nod their head and pass and one time a stranger just walks up to him and jesus said why are you in this condition what can i do for you and he said i have no man darkness can take away good people from your life job who was the wealthiest man in the east please listen carefully the wealthiest man in the east he had all kinds of people herds and children the moment his children died and everything left him his relatives his family members everybody deserted him the last and only person who was standing with him was his wife there are some of you right now when you call your son name people are surprised while you are in that situation because there are so many people connected to you in the place of influence but darkness has made people to reject you and you've been isolated and left alone tonight you have come to know the truth in the name of jesus the assignment of the truth is to make you free every time i read about the madman in gadara i feel so sad the bible says the man caught himself lacerating himself day and night bound by these wicked spirits hallelujah Many years ago, I was in Port Harcourt, and I remember going, it was a company, I was to meet someone there, and true story, the woman, I think one of the women, she was dressed, you know, these security companies that were outsourced, and I remember just asking her to help me reach someone and let the person know that I have come, you know, as we're having an appointment with him, and I looked at the woman, she sounded so brilliant, and God is my witness, the woman told me that she was wrapping up her PhD. Now, now, not to insult the job, but not for that status. 
this is what darkness can do it can alter your identity that when someone looks at you he says you were when you were 20 years you were full of life i thought by now you would have done great things for the kingdom what reduced you to look like yesterday this is the case with many people darkness can truly alter your identity that the glory and the grace that should emanate from your life is no longer seen and people look at you and it's like you are a testament of woes and reproach so when jesus when god said let there be light that is a real miracle let there be light means let your tears come to an end let there be light listen let there be light means that the reign of darkness over your life misrepresenting you whose house are you going to this woman don't go there if you want to make it don't go near that house there is a spirit in that house that anybody that enters there goes down and people begin to avoid you there are many of you you are carrying you know pastor said something in joking in passing that there were two kinds of boats in the bible and there were two men that entered that boat somebody entered the boat he didn't insult anybody he didn't look for trouble he just carried a spirit into the boat and people started going down they lost their properties they lost everything another person was in the boat and he was both of them were sleeping hallelujah darkness darkness represents evil in its entirety i have seen families with graduates for many years that none of them can earn up to 10 20 000 in a month and you will see a woman who labored and gave birth to children handsome gentlemen beautiful ladies and yet no door opens darkness is dangerous listen as we begin to pray tonight make sure you don't keep quiet get angry and say this thing has to leave my life this reproach that has come upon my life that is called darkness the woman with the issue of blood is that a name the madman in gadara is that a name no every child is named at birth what happened to these people that their problems replace their names that's what darkness can do it can carry your problem and replace your name a name that means beauty and color yet yeah, people will forget your identity and tie you to something that family where nobody rises that family where all the ladies is like they're a cause they come into the life of any man he goes down that family where the gentlemen are the women and the, no no you have to insist that light will come to change that identity for as long as it was darkness listen Jacob did not know which was Leah or Rachel but when it was morning the arrival of light he could see clearly hallelujah when you tolerate darkness in your life you will live a defeated Christian life I told you that darkness in scripture essentially represents ignorance and evil that means the assignment of light is to deal with these two things to deal with evil but to deal with ignorance most believers only focus on the evil part the evil spirits but they do not focus on the fact that darkness is also ignorance you can cast a spirit in one moment you don't cast ignorance in one moment are we together with one declaration in the name of jesus an evil spirit that has tormented individuals can go but it is a process to drive darkness as ignorance and many believers do not have the discipline to stay and get the truth that brings them liberty indeed jesus said and ye shall know the truth and the truth that you know and you engage by faith is what will set you free that the truth can make men free are we together are we learning now how do you know the presence of darkness in your life by searching around for every aspect in your life that is inconsistent with what the word of god said should be it tells you that there might be darkness roaming around them. any aspect of your life that is inconsistent with the written word inconsistent with the spoken word must be an area of immediate project because it only tells you that darkness is roaming around there this is a call to take responsibility listen carefully 
when you tolerate darkness you permit it to grow i hope you know darkness can grow yes sir the bible says for darkness shall cover the earth that is a level then when it grows it becomes gross darkness the people it first comes as darkness but when you permit it to complacency and giving of excuses it now begins to grow until it is called gross darkness so isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you he says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee yeah. hallelujah yeah. praise the name of the lord so i want you to settle it for a fact before we begin to deal with all the aspects of the kingdom that the bible calls light it's important for you to know that the limiting factor in the life of many people is either number one they are not saved or number two if and when they are saved then there is the reign of darkness in their lives darkness as the manifestation of satanic forces evil spirits wicked spirits or darkness as ignorance most likely both when you want to deal with darkness it takes more than administering deliverance you can cast the spirit but if your mind is not transformed are we together now you are still in darkness spirits are not the only tests of darkness ignorance is also darkness even when there is no spirit there and when there is ignorance there the spirits can still return because darkness will invite them your ignorance will give them the access to come back again if you're understanding what i'm teaching you say amen, amen. so apostle where do i start from that you are unsaved you need jesus in a hurry when that decision is made then the next decision is to be ready and to be willing to embrace the ministry of the holy spirit to embrace the word of god and then to begin a radical journey of enlightenment enlightenment ephesians chapter 1 please from verse 16. i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers he says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you help me the spirit of wisdom in the revelation and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 now and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power where do i start from the determination to eradicate darkness in all forms and fashion and it starts number one by commanding by the blood of jesus and by the name that these spirit influences that have come to represent doom and darkness in and around your life and that one you will experience it in this conference but then the responsibility of launching a merciless campaign against darkness darkness dwelling as ignorance the bible says in hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened you see there ephesians 4 18 being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts there are many miracles in the bible that the, the bible will record that there were places jesus did not heal them did not heal or he healed some there were places the bible say he healed all but i have studied my bible and there was no blind man in scripture who met jesus and went without healing jesus took the subject of blindness personal to a point that he prayed for one person twice jesus will hardly pray for one person twice if he met you once that was it but he was insistent on seeing that a man's blindness left him he prayed for him and said how is the situation now he said i see but it's not clear i see he said no i will not tolerate that little darkness left i will still pray again 
I see men like trees. He said, no, men are not trees. They can be like trees, but they are not trees. He prayed for him again. Jesus had zero tolerance for darkness. Are we together? Light. Why are things not working in my life? I love the Lord with all my heart, but what is the key to an excelling life? What is the key to dominion? What is the key to a life of grace? What is the key to longevity? What is the key to breaking free from these yokes of darkness? It's not my fault that I was born from the family I was born from. Must I suffer the limitations because I was born there? There has to be a way to liberty. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Just because you have dwelt around darkness for a long time, does not mean that light cannot set you free. Let me give you an example that many of you who listen to my teachings have given these examples time and again. Imagine with me a room that has been dark for six years. You have that in your mind? Dark for six years. No one has put the bulb on. Imagine another room that has been dark since last year. No one entered that room. Two rooms now. Imagine a room that has been dark since last week. No one tried to put the light on. Imagine a room that has been dark since this morning. So we have four rooms now. Many years, six years, one year ago, one week ago, a few hours ago. Now, assuming there is a central command that switches on the bulbs. When you switch on the bulb and it's supposed to affect all four rooms, which of the rooms will be lit first? Help me. That means no matter how long the room has been dark, if it is authentic light that comes the timing the longevity of the darkness does not matter if that room is not lit something is wrong i just dramatized john 1 5 for you for the bible says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there has never been a time when light and darkness sat down to discuss and negotiate. The presence of true light is the immediate exit of darkness. Do you believe this? When I found this key, I became a student of light. I said I would take responsibility for my life and no matter how long it would take, I would be a student of scripture until i eradicate darkness darkness that can tie a glorious and a beautiful life and render you to be helpless and look hopeless you need to take responsibility apostle are you aware of the kind of darkness and witchcraft and wickedness in my family i assure you it is because true light has not come there when true light comes you will see the power that raised christ from the dead over principalities and witches listen you know, when people talk about, of course, I understand that people are in pain. And sometimes they say, Apostle, I know that you've been doing this thing, but you don't know the kind of problem in my family. And I say, you think so? Do you know the kind of problem that was in my own family? Everybody met problem. There are no, there are no empty mountains. There are always giants on every mountain. So because you met your own giant and we've killed our own, don't make a mistake and think when you see a clean mountain warfare happen there, well, there were giants that were subdued. There are no empty mountains anywhere. Every family had devils somewhere. If you find them silent, they were made to be quiet. It says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Because sometimes we don't contend for light that brings victory because we like to attract sympathy and say, my case is a special case. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that there have been nobody's case was worse than Job's case in the Bible. At least not in modern history that I know. That in one day, look at the tragedy that came to a, a man's life. Your children, your estates, your business in one day. He was the headline everywhere. Job, some will say that that power you went to collect, now it has finally caught up with you. And then as if that was not enough, then boils began to come out. Imagine you were married to such a man. People will look at you and advise you and say, you are still here? This guy is already dead. Don't blame her for saying, curse God and die. Would she spend the rest of her life there? And Job said, no problem. You can say all you want to say, but all the days of my appointed time I will wait. But I love, I love Job chapter 42 and verse 10. It says, and God restored 
This is the God we're talking about. God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. That for someone by December when you come here for service, your testimony will be your tears of joy. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Do you believe this? God is able to turn the lives of men around. Don't get too used to darkness. It's been there for 20 years, but let light come and you see what will happen. And you see the, the, the product of light. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. When it comes, it can do a quick walk. I know that you should have had a job for 10, 20 years, but in one day, God can give you a job that is equivalent to 10 people's job. You see, the thing with God is that light comes in its various dimensions. It can come as restoration. It can come as healing. It can come as breakthrough. It can come as favor. It can come as speed. It is still light. I just named the many things that will start happening to you from tonight. For someone is speed, for someone is restoration. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Praise the name of the Lord. But the responsibility of crying and praying for light is your personal responsibility. Are we together now? Yes. You have to be angry with your current position. You have to be angry with the fact that your life has been ineffective as far as bringing glory to God and insist to take responsibility that every area that looks like darkness in my life, list it down, take responsibility. This is beyond just hearing a sermon. This finance, this wicked, evil, satanic dreams, this disfavor upon my life that someone vows to bless me and then I go to his office and it's as if something came upon him to forget. What is the secret of favor? What is the secret of speed? What is the secret of restoration? How do I have five children and not one of them is risen and strong and able to bless me? Yet Psalm 112 said, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. You take that responsibility. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free John 17 17 sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so the truth that translates as light and liberates the saints please hear me I'm trying to be as simple as possible because I want everybody to understand the truth that the Bible calls light is the Word of God but when you hear the Word of God the Word of God means many things Number one, the word of God is truth as revealed from scripture. The word of God also represents the speakings of God to you. Are we together now? Yes. So both the spoken word and the written word are profitable to give us stature, to bring us liberty and to help us to command triumph and dominion in experience. Light. For instance, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Light is coming now, and it shall come to pass. If thou, Joshua Selman, shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord, to do and to observe all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high. Listen to me. The first time I read this scripture, I was in one room, and I believed it. I believed it. I believed it. I believed it with all my heart that if a man believes the word of the Lord and finds the secret that lifts men you can be lifted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you let's list the blessings I hope you are learning please give it to us blessed shall thou be in Lagos is that not the name of your city so why is everything rejecting you in Lagos why why is everybody running away from you 
why you may be a man of god but why is everything you are sincere you are working with integrity loving the lord but it looks like nothing is working blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field next verse blessed shall be the fruit of your body please mother say amen, amen. that means no woman is permitted to suffer and give birth to an arm robber or to give birth to a prostitute or a troublemaker that is plaguing society the bible says the fruit of your body is blessed Amen. blessed is the fruit of your ground Amen. regardless the economic situation this is what light says listen you don't you don't agree when you see it you agree with god in believing and engage his word to see things change verse 5 Blessed shall be thy basket and thy stall. Yeah. Verse 6 now. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. Yeah. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Yeah. I wish I had time. We can spend a whole day on this scripture. There are people who are only blessed when they go out. They are not blessed when they come in. There are people who are only blessed when they are in. They are never blessed when they go out. The Bible says a man who is truly blessed must be blessed when he comes in and blessed when he goes out. Whether you are in Lagos, you are in US, you are in Canada, you are in America, you are in your village, for, for, for as long as you are the one moving, the Bible says that blessing must follow you. And we saw that in the life of Abraham. When Lot left and went to settle near Sodom, the Lord told him from where thou art lift up your eyes, northwards, eastwards, that everywhere your soul you know your eyes see it shall be given it's not like a vision that I, I mean what kind of thing how can i be preaching in the name of the lord and then i'm done preaching they obey me in church and oppress me in my room what sort of authority is this i knew that my authority was not it was not yet established and i had to go and and fish out scriptures like arrows there has to be a way behold i give you authority power over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy are we together that we have been exalted with christ far above principalities powers every name thrones dominions yes sir i put these things together and i meditated upon them i believed it i remember very clearly that night when the light entered my spirit i didn't pray and ask the spirits to go i pleaded with them i said show up again till till tomorrow they have not come let me tell you ladies and gentlemen i don't mean to brag but darkness only looks bold when it meets ignorance there is a level of light illumination that shines upon your heart you will see how cheap satan is hallelujah oh nobody rises in lagos if you don't know this man and this man you will not rise that is what darkness is as bold as your ignorance makes it look if you go for knowledge you can rewrite the things that people say the things i'm telling you by the grace of god have proven it with my own life so i'm not just here to waste your time and give you cunningly devised fables this is true are we together when light comes it brings with it confidence you know that god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent The Bible says Gentiles shall come to my light when I read it I believed it so I kept looking out for Gentiles until they came and the Bible says it's not only Gentiles even their kings will come and I said let me prepare because their kings are coming this is what I listen your spiritual reality is dependent on the light the truth that comes to you that you know you understand and you believe my assignment tonight is just to show you we are diagnosing the problem by tomorrow i'll begin to show you the various light components that help a believer to stand victorious are we together the assignment tonight is to just show us what is wrong you know how a doctor
that every aspect of my life that is yet to represent the glory of God is only so because darkness is still somewhere looming around my life if I can bring you to a point where you accept that responsibility tonight you are ready for victory apostle but I'm a hard-working person this finance I've done my best the only thing I've not done is to steal the money does not want to come to me this is what I'm saying are we together now there are parents who will not even give their own children money and yet they will package it and come and say man of God I've been looking for you I just want to bless you and you are wondering is this fair but you see our realities are defined by the lights that we command hallelujah I know a whole family true story a whole family that mysteriously just had HIV yes whole family and it started by someone having a dream where someone came with a syringe and said this one is blood infected and injected the person in the dream and the person woke up physically and then symptoms started they went to the hospital and they said you've, you've had this for a long time you did not know how did it come how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about everything my father has not planted in the name of Jesus Christ whether it's in your blood and your body I decree and declare it must go down this night These are the keys that control dominion in experience. It's one thing to talk dominion. It's another thing to walk the reality of it. The dominion power of God has equal value in any nation because the same Lord is rich unto all. There is something that when you find a body of truth that when you find ladies and gentlemen you will command the anointing in a way that will surprise you there is a body of truth that when you find a generation must listen to you there is a body of truth that when you find you will become such a blessing to people there is a body of truth that when you find you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delightsome land. There is a body of truth that when you find, you can know that no nation can reject you. It does not matter their sentiments. There is a body of truth that if you find, you will command wealth and abundance in a way that people will think you went to a herbalist or you caught a human head. Do you believe this? You are gathered tonight because God is determined determined to see to it that this the products of light speak in your life but be angry with darkness right where you are seated whether outside or inside and those following online i want you to imagine for one minute the various areas of darkness in your life that have refused to go and take responsibility i have left it that is why the reason why a job has not come is because i have been going around dropping my cv but i have not dropped my cv on the word i am yet to find the component the bible says that one time the the owner of the vineyard was inviting men to come to the vineyard and he found some people idle and he said why sitest thou idle they say no man employ us immediately he called them and they were they were brought in see the kingdom only works from the lens of the light you have hallelujah do you believe that apostle i'm a good person but people don't like me nobody is liked by default the world is too wicked for people to just like you by default there is a grace the light of god's favor that comes upon the face of a man that will compel people to like you from nation to nation but there is a body of truth that controls that do you understand my teaching tonight that darkness is responsible 
for most of the chaos in our lives and that this darkness is twofold one spiritual forces that militate against the purposes of god in your life and then number two darkness manifesting as ignorance bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge bankruptcy of understanding is called darkness among the many disasters of darkness the worst is that it gives you a false identity this is not me this life is not me no this reproach does not belong to me i'm carrying another man's destiny where is my destiny that destiny that represents beauty and color and grace and power if you're with me say amen You must get angry at darkness and make up your mind you're a man of God here you must make up your mind by the spirit that ministry must work for me the Bible says to give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting the call of God upon your life and you do that by studying to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. You are in business and things are not working. It's time for you to find out from the word of God. This is darkness. Every time you see what does not make manifest. What brings fear. What keeps spirit at work in your life. Everything that is sponsored by ignorance is called darkness. And you must get angry in the name of Jesus and take responsibility why am I not able to feed and take care of my family the Bible says any man that cannot cater for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel I am not an infidel you say what is this joblessness this embarrassment there has to be a way out I will be on a journey searching for light and that light shines through darkness and in a moment you drive away darkness only to give road to glory and grace and power so jesus looks at the man at bethesda and says stand up pick up your bed walk away and that was the end of it that is the light of the world hallelujah you see the beautiful thing about light is that true light does not fade the sun has been shining before any of us arrived here and it has never needed assistance your phone because it was artificially made you need to recharge it no matter how bright it shines some of us your phone is on four percent now three percent one is almost some is even off you have it can come back but not for now but the sun when it is dark in nigeria as far as the sun is concerned there has never been darkness in its economy Darkness is simply a product of geography. If you ask the sun, where is darkness? You say, I don't know. From the day I was established, I have never seen it. It is simply the rotation of the earth that is responsible for that theory we have today. As far as the sun is concerned, it does not rise. It does not go down. Darkness, it does not share dominion with darkness. If you go and ask the sun to lecture you, the sun will say from the time the earth was created, there has only been light. And you say, but you are lying. You say, well, based on where you live, but as far as I am concerned, as the sun. Are we together now? How do you tell the sun that there was once darkness? You say, I, 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 I respect you, but you are lying. Based on my reality, you are lying. There has never been darkness. Kai, this is powerful. My goodness. So if your life becomes like that sun, even if you are in Egypt, there will be light in Goshen. Whereas there's darkness everywhere. And people will ask you and say, how is this happening to you? That we know that things, they are downsizing and this is happening. But it looks like you have used the word of God to create another kind of reality. Now you understand what it means by let your light so shine before men. If God is asking your light to shine, light does not shine in light. It shines in darkness. Are we together now? There was a parable of the lost coin. There's no time to touch on that. We'll deal with that tomorrow. And the Bible says somebody who had a valuable treasure, coin, coin can help you to buy things. And it was lost. It was in the room, but he could not find it. And for as long as he could not find it, there was nothing he could do. The Bible says the first approach to that restoration was the man lit his candle. 
Then number two, he took a broom and he started sweeping in the presence of light until he found it. And he called everybody and said, come and rejoice with me. Light has helped me to find something that is mine. It's in the room, but not in my hands. Light can help you find your job that is in Lagos, but not yet in your hand. Light can help you find your health that is around, but not yet in your life. Everything that should be in your life is already within your domain. It takes light to fish your portion and bring it to you. Hallelujah. Till today and till forever, I remain a student of scripture. Do you know why? Because I'm on a project to not spare anything that looks like darkness in my life. I consistently upgrade you see you can have light and yet your light is not bright enough so you continue learning you continue growing you continue building you don't say I have a little light your phone has light but it's not enough to light this place so if you depend on your phone lighting you will never know the beauty of this auditorium it takes light high level light place at various positions if you have light in only one area of your life that will be the only area you'll be able to see you see that the lights here are placed across several places and that's why they're giving us light we can see everywhere the beauty of this auditorium ladies and gentlemen you are going to cry unto God and say this area of darkness that has dwelt in my life that has dwelt in my finances my marriage my health in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I will still show you one more scripture to wrap up. But whilst you are seated, I'd like you to pray. Father, I am ready to deal with darkness. I am ready in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that represents darkness in my life and my destiny, now is the time and now is the moment you must leave. And I'd like you to pray. Every ignorance, bankruptcy of truth, that was the true light that lighted every man Go ahead and pray. Is someone pray. yes sir the lord is hearing you man of god the lord is hearing you hearing your cry darkness in ministry darkness in your health darkness in your finances it's time for it to go in the name of Jesus that the grace and the glory of the Lord that has been ordained to radiate from your life it must show up I have allowed the reign of darkness for far too long I now take responsibility hallelujah Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him. Listen, let me tell you this. Years ago, I remember one day I was meditating on this scripture. And I'm saying this to the glory of God. And I remember in that vision, while I was meditating, it, it was a dream, I would say. And I slept and I saw myself standing before presidents of nations and shaking hands and they were greeting. And when I came back, I said, wow. And then I read this scripture again. And the Lord told me that if you will get light, this will be your destiny. That you will stand before the great. Looking back today, 
I'm almost in tears because God does not lie. You see, God does not lie. That the people you think are great will look at you and call you great because light elevated you to an enviable position where you become an inspiration to generations. There are many things I do not believe because they are products of ignorance. For instance, that you cannot rise from where you are and then the world celebrate the grace of God upon your life. Please don't believe that. Are we together? Let's finish that scripture. First Peter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness. What did he call you into? What did he call you into? So when he calls men out of darkness, what makes you spectacular is not just the size of your body, not your voice, not necessarily your looks. It is that you are surrounded by marvelous light. So much light that darkness cannot come again. You don't tell darkness go, you tell light come. When light comes, darkness goes. Is that true? So many of us have dwelt in darkness for far too long. And the Lord is challenging you right now. Get angry. Identify the areas of darkness and insist that in this conference, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it must give way. There are many things as I wrap up that qualify to be called darkness. Let me list some of them for you in case you have forgotten. Are you ready? Number one, disfavor is darkness. Delay is darkness. Retrogression is darkness. Plagues of sicknesses and infirmity, darkness. Oppressions of, 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 of witchcraft and all kinds of things, darkness. Stagnation, limitation is called darkness. The inability to make constructive progress in your life, darkness. Financial limitations, darkness. Are we together? Threats that you go to bed and you cannot sleep in peace. You wake up more tired than you were when you slept because of evil and wicked dreams. The Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. But there are people, the moment they close their eyes, they begin another battle. They get up tired. What kind of oppression is that? Darkness. How about the, uh, some kind of demonic cloud covering your giftings? Listen, let me tell you. I have met gifted people in my life. There are gifted people in this city. There are gifted people even within this place. I have met gifted people in ministry, gifted people in business, so much so that you wonder, why are you at this level with this kind of gift? That some of the people you are celebrating are not half as gifted as you, but there they are spirits that just sit on the glory of men and not allow them rise. Gifted but limited. This conference is an opportunity that God has put together so that that veil be lifted from your eyes yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ yeah. for some of you we do not even know who you are because you are standing from a position of darkness and we cannot know whether you are the one God sent for us to bless and lift because we cannot see you I told you that darkness it, it creates an aberrated identity you don't know who is who you might be looking for someone and stand near the person but because it is in darkness you cannot even know light is powerful the bible says that which makes manifest is light hallelujah praise the name of the lord when jesus was born there was a star in the sky is that in your bible that star was so bright the magi looked at it and said no this is not just that the, the, the atmosphere is bright, there has to be something. And they followed that light until they got to where Jesus was. That means there is a light that should compel men from wherever they are to say, what is making, there is an illumination in this church, there is an il illumination in this family, that they should come to right where you are. And Jesus as a baby, he had not prayed, he had not fasted, there was just light over him, and gifts were already coming to him. 
before he made mention of any first prayer before he made mention of any first fasting before he even understood those who would walk with him as a baby simply because there was a light upon him the magi came and they brought to him gifts of gold of frankincense and of myrrh. how do adults worship a baby and drop gifts as a baby he could not even say thank you that is the power of light that when light is upon you you will marvel and wonder at the things that men will do they will leave any distance to any distance and say are you the james they've been talking about the lord sent me to come and do this for you and you will stand in awe and say god is this how you really move and god says that is what happens when you embrace light fight darkness reject darkness be on a campaign against darkness darkness especially as ignorance make up your mind that i will not be a believer that is just saved and yet wallowing in ignorance full of supposed wise sayings that do not carry any spiritual power for instance one day go better that is not an accurate scriptural statement it's just a sociological comfort for instance life is turn by turn my turn is coming see those statements you nobody's turn is coming anywhere you force the time to arrive at your i didn't get my turn now yes there is a law of time and chance where potentials come towards you but if it must be your turn it happens by taking a dim the bible says right from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force no destiny helper will come by default to help you it will take you programming your heavens for that to happen this is true hallelujah So tonight I have the assignment of challenging you to shake you up to say no there is more to your life than this you've been given all kinds of excuses leave those excuses this night you're a man of God you are you are a worship minister and nobody has discerned your grace in Lagos it's a different thing if you are in your season of training if the season of training is over just know that it is darkness keeping you down and you get up and say Lord I will press in light one song that will come from your spirit will make the nations to place a demand let me tell you it's not difficult to rise when light is the one that is lifting you if you try to lift yourself you will be wasting your time hallelujah i met a gentleman a few weeks ago where i was in lagos ministering at a church and i met this gentleman very fine brilliant young man and i think he's responsible for one of these inventions uh, you know are across the, the transport sector and he was speaking to me and i said ah this guy is smart this guy is very very smart and when he was telling me some of the things that he was doing with the governments of a few nations and all of that, I told him, I said, this is wonderful, but I want to pray for you. There is a grace called visibility. You see, if you do not have the grace for visibility, you can be as gifted as anything and you will remain there. Like many people whose tables are full of the solutions to national and transcontinental problems. That if these men were called, whether in government or in certain corporations, the world will experience their wisdom and be grateful for it. Yet those people will remain there, those projects will rot on the table because visibility has not been given to men. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare again, Whoever needs to see you, whoever needs to discern the workings of God in your hand and to lift you, may God position them to see you. May God position them to see you. Hallelujah. But now hear me please. And this one I will begin this night. One of the worst forms of darkness, the worst manifestation of darkness that I know of is sickness and infirmity. Please listen. I've been sick before. I know what it means for your body or any aspect of your body to deteriorate and to be in pain. If you've never been sick before, you will not, exp you will not appreciate the power, the healing power of Jesus Christ. Darkness. You see, everybody is given the privilege of having one body per lifetime. Are we together? Yes nobody as much as we know science has not perfected the art of transferring a soul into another body we've not seen that happen yet so you are given only one body per lifetime please let me have your attention whatever happens to that body it literally sustains the ability to end your life whether your time is there or not 
and how many of you know that the only authorization you have to remain upon the earth is that not that you have a body that your body is healthy enough to keep your spirit in it are we together there is a health a threshold health requirement that if your body goes below your spirit will have to leave whether it is your time or not are we together now that means anything that tries to disturb the health of your body is attempting to administer death to your life and you should not tolerate it are we together now this is very important we have all kinds of sicknesses that disturb people and and rob them of the liberty to enjoy beauty and color the man called hezekiah great king and yet this man was about to die and the prophet came and said put your house in order you are going to die and he said no no god you whatever it is that you do cannot allow the dominion of darkness no wonder the bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed There is a spirit that is wasting the lives of people across. You see vibrant, strong people. My head, my head, and the next thing, they say the person has gone. Now, I am not getting you emotional. If you've lost a loved one, that's fine. But I, I came here to on an assignment. And one of it is that this plague of sickness, infirmity, and death, these are spirits and like any other form of darkness they can be kept at bay are we together now this is true you have to believe it so i used to have these demon spirits come to press me years ago literally like you're pressing someone to die and i'm wondering what did i do until i found out there are people who had that experience and never woke up again they just said the person went to bed and died it's, it's only if you have an opportunity to go to heaven that the person will say, I did not die, oh, I was killed. These wicked spirits from the realm of the spirit. No devil will take your life before you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know of a young man who graduated, very fine young man, true story. He came to collect his certificate and was on a bike and a car just came out. I don't know whether the man was all right or not and just cleared he died instantly the only son of his mother hallelujah if you are here and you have that kind of story in your family when we begin to pray i like you to believe that that satanic plague must leave you <laughs> that the last death that occurred around your family is the last don't say it always happens no by light i end this demonic satanic manifestation hallelujah you know how many times people have seen me dead i refuse to die oh, that's why i'm alive sometimes i want to take a trip and sincere people anointed people will say apostle please don't go we've seen a ghastly motor accident but i have to go and minister these people are, are waiting what do i tell them i can't come for your conference because they said i would die what am i coming to preach then how, who am i coming to help sure some of you are supposed to don't speak like this so speak like that that is exactly the fear i want to drive out of your life it says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage hallelujah praise the name of the lord the righteous are as bold as a lion but your boldness is not based on nothing your boldness is based on light that you can stand with light and stand in peace and know that in the name of Jesus, the word of God will work for me. There's nothing the devil can do about a man who has found light. His assignment is to stop sufficient light from getting to you. But once that light has arrived, you will arise and then you will shine. It's in your Bible. It says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. You see, if you refuse light and I accept light, your refusing light does not affect me. Are we together now? when it has to do with the ministry of light it is personal i can only encourage you but surrounding yourself with the light that gives you victory is entirely your responsibility hallelujah 
So tonight, within the few minutes that we have, I want to speak. I'm going to speak over your life. And then would have, for every of the sessions, we will do this. This plague of sickness and death. And death. We're about to enter what we call the ember months. It has even become a... It's almost like an unwritten season. So once they say ember months, people begin to shake and say, so this is it. Who is going to go now? Must somebody die because it's the ember months? I hope you are not angry that I'm challenging you. I came to provoke you in your spirit to say this year, I will not lose any of my loved ones. That in the name of Jesus Christ, you can, you must insist that by the power of the Holy Ghost. And while you are saying it, the devil will be telling you, but they diagnose something. They, every tree that has not been planted by my father, that is the confidence of the believer. No, every tree that has not been planted, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Man of God, you will not die. That devil lying to you that you will preach and then die on stage? No, sir. With long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we are going to pray. I just sense strong in my spirit. I will speak over your life, but I want us to pray. I don't know why God is putting it in my heart to rebuke the spirit of death. In one minute or, the, or two minutes, you are going to mention both your name and everybody God has brought around you and declare the covering of the blood that you will not hear bad news. No death. Please, someone pray. Be serious. Outside, those following online, lift your voice and pray. The Bible says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. I shall not leave. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Someone pray. Pray. The sound of death, the sound of mourning will not be heard. In my house, nor my habitation. Someone with faith, pray. The name of your children hallelujah please look at me in jesus name while still praying it's not only men that can die things can die like a business can die like influence can die like reputation can die so when i say prophesy life it's not only life in terms of your existence you will speak to anything that can have life whether it is your business whether it is your influence it will not die open your mouth and pray death will not be around my habitation in the name of jesus the son of the living god death will not be around my habitation whatever god does is forever Yes, sir. Go ahead and pray. The works of your hands will not die. The influence God has given you, he says, I will bless you and I will make your name great. A man's name can die. Your relevance can fade away. But i like you to refuse. Pray in the name of Jesus. Preserve those appointed unto death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're still praying. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. 
the resurrected King. We're going to pray. You know the areas of darkness in your life. Please look at me. Look at me. I don't want you to keep quiet and I don't want you to be ashamed and embarrassed. Every area where you have not seen result, genuine, consistent result, mention it by name and say in this conference, the, the darkness that sponsors the reign of that pain or that evil must give way. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. My life must bring glory to Jesus. My life must bring glory to Jesus. Contend in the name of Jesus. If it's your finances, mention it. You may not know what dimension of light, but identify the darkness there. You must change. Sickness up and down. Oppression up and down. Retrogression up and down. No. Joy today replaced by sorrow. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Pray from the depth of your heart. It's a word and prayer conference. Make sure you are praying. Darkness, your time is up. Financial darkness, marital darkness, darkness in the area of fruitfulness, darkness in the area of career, darkness in the area of ministry. Someone who is angry in your spirit, go ahead and pray. It must give way. The plague of divorce in this family, the plague of poverty and failure and sickness on family death on fruitfulness in ministry bankruptcy of influence and visibility you must give way in the name of Jesus disappointed expectations take a minute to pray take a minute to pray take a minute to pray of the balcony are you praying the overflows outside make sure you are praying the lord sees your heart you are praying flesh may be weak but the spirit is willing God has spoken great things concerning you do not be silent pray go ahead and pray pray and I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as I am with I will always worship you and I Hallelujah. Say after me, Father. Father. Please shout it. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I decree and declare yeah. every manifestation of darkness in my life. It gives way now. Open your mouth and pray. It gives way now. 
gives way now. Are there people of prayer here? It gives way now. Mothers pray. Fathers pray. Pray. The reign of darkness. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. name we pray in Jesus name we pray please don't be tired something is happening in the spirit Genesis 1 5 Genesis 1 5 please help us media Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5 the Bible says let me just read for sake of time God called the light day and the darkness he called night so light has a name another name for light is day and another name for darkness is night and the bible says weeping endures for as long as it is night once you are in darkness crying does not come to an end it says but joy comes with the morning that means it is not the chronological passage of time that causes day and night it is the presence or the absence of light it is night now geographically speaking but it can become day when you have light hallelujah there are many of us whether it is 12 noon whether it's 6 a.m in the morning 6 p.m in the night 12 midnight spiritually you are perpetually in the night because it is darkness that is the reason why you cry in the morning you cry in the afternoon because weeping is connected to night hallelujah the bible says but joy comes with the morning and morning is not 6 a.m morning is any time your light comes therefore you are going to pray that in the name of jesus my heart is open to receive light that is your next prayer point please open your mouth and pray my heart is open to receive light understanding spiritual illumination ah someone is praying Lord, the light component it takes to arise and to shine, to reveal your glory to my world, that my life commands the excellency of the kingdom. I obtain that grace. My heart is open. My heart is open. Light that damages ignorance. open my heart is open i see this conference as a spiritual investment that finally i have a chance to put together the truth the light that will liberate me indeed hallelujah hallelujah jesus said and ye shall know the truth he never said being around the truth sets you free he never even said having access to the truth sets you free ye shall know the truth ye shall know the truth ye shall know the truth from tomorrow we're going to be exploring the truth the light component that is responsible for the various aspects of our Christian life that at the end of these sessions you will stand you can wave yesterday goodbye and know that it is gone for good and forever in the name of Jesus but for someone here who came with any kind of satanic medical report just place your hand I want to pray just to speak over your life and then I will also rebuke the spirit of death this thing is not leaving me I will still pray it when God is insisting on something like this is because he wants to avert tears from a family 
this is why he has if this is the only reason it is worth it you're trusting God for a miracle just place your hand on your chest father there are several people who have come inside and outside many following online they have come to access the truth and to know it the truth that liberates the truth that sets free right now I am praying first and foremost if there is anyone under the sound of my voice you have been seeing dead people in your dreams you go to bed and what you are interacting with dead people things that have to do with the grave I decree and declare whatever from the grave is calling you and saying you must come and join us I severe that relationship now for the Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness I'm saying it again if there is anyone who is being called into untimely death by dreams prophetic experiences ill speakings of men activities of witchcraft I decree and I declare right now this moment here at New Heritage Baptist Church in the name of Jesus the son of the living God let the spirit of death live your life forever and if you have seen any one of your loved ones whether in dreams or visions dying we cancel it right now anyone here suffering any kind of blood disease I'm seeing a thermometer rising and falling high blood pressure in the name of Jesus Christ I command that BP to go down eye conditions be healed now any organ failure in your body for some of you the organ may be so failed that you may need a replacement may God who is the greatest physician in the name of Jesus let him bring you a replacement now be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name one of the truths in the kingdom is the power of the prophetic when it is administered within the boundary of scripture the prophetic can work wonders I want to speak over someone that in the name of Jesus for many of you before you get home I say this as one sent by God in the name of Jesus something that has not happened in your life from January till now may it happen this night may it happen this night a call you have not received may you receive it this night in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah and for someone here any long-standing issue in your life it has refused to give way maybe health maybe your job problems in your office maybe your spiritual life in the name of Jesus Christ tonight as Dagon fell before the ark let that problem fall before the feet of Jesus hallelujah for someone you will wake up tomorrow with a text with an email demanding for you from people who have rejected you and I mean what I'm saying hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the kind of favor you have not seen from January till now in the name of Jesus my God the one who helps men I decree and declare between tonight and this week finishing may that favor testimony rest upon your life hallelujah hallelujah and for someone here one of the blessings that you are receiving tonight is not just material money or favor what you are receiving tonight is a restoration of your spiritual fire 
a restoration of your spiritual fire because the truth is that God began to walk in your life because of a glorious prophetic destiny but somewhere along the line either through carelessness or through discouragement you just stop your walk with God and and it's like you you dismiss yourself from the school of the spirit God is calling you to return back in the name of Jesus when I began my discussion we shared the scripture that said God desires number one that all men be saved and then that they come to the knowledge of the truth I was so humbled and touched when I saw several people outside with their hearts hungry and open and several others up the balcony and around here I know that every time God allows for a people to come this way it is because he adds daily as many as should be saved the business of being saved is not just about Christianity I have taught you without that admission into the kingdom you are perpetually a victim of Satan darkness in its entirety the authorized escape route from darkness and the authorized admission into the kingdom is Jesus it is only through the living Christ that we have access to this life and this grace wherein we stand I want to give an opportunity right now for two groups of people in one please let me have your attention you are here and you are saying apostle I need Jesus I came for this conference but whilst you were speaking the Holy Ghost began to talk to me that I need to make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle I once made this decision but sincerely I cannot say in truth that right now my life is intact with God I want to give you an opportunity very quickly the hall is full so I'm not going to ask you to come out but what I will ask you to do very boldly if we can let's try it and see if it works for those up the balcony who are making this decision I just want you to move forward and come just in front there and then those in here let's try to see if we can just squeeze one or two people at the aisles because I need to see the people those outside you will do the same um, at least just move forward let someone an official outside just guide them on where to stand after I lead you to pray you'll be directed on what else to do I want to count one to five someone who is bold and not ashamed come and stand God bless you let's appreciate them come come I need no other argument I need no other plea it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Two, come. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. I'm seeing an auditorium. I hope there are people from that, that, that hall who are coming to the front. If there are people, celebrate them as they come to the front. God bless you. The hall on the screen and every other place. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Four and finally five. I want to salute everyone who has come. If you are still coming, please move forward. I want to see you because I want us to pray together. Listen to me, beloved people of God. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It is the noblest thing to do in this side of God's kingdom to make this decision to accept the Lordship of Jesus as Savior and Lord and Christ. This is officially your admission into the kingdom, into a life of victory, into the kingdom of light, even his dear son. So I'm going to lead you, young and old, you have come declaring your faith in Jesus as I lead you through this simple prayer I want you to repeat after me um, those outside I'm sure you can see and hear me and for someone who is watching online perhaps you are watching by way of television following from the internet or perhaps watching a rebroadcast and the Lord is saying to come make this decision hallelujah I know that you are being given cards now but let me plead that you suspend filling the cards for a moment and then I'll leave you to pray when you pray I'll direct you on what else to do all of you who are in front, please let me ask you, lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this from the depth of your heart as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight 
I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your wonderful hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And the Bible says, as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I declare that you honor their profession of faith. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that you are recipients of eternal life. Indeed, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, we call you sons of light. And we decree and declare that darkness is on its way out of your life. Never to return again. In Jesus' name. Now, two instructions very quickly. Please, can you give me one of these cards just for you to see? Thank you. You'll be given a card like this. If you have not gotten a card like this, like the one I'm holding, please be patient. Keep standing until you are given a card like this. You would be expected to fill the card. Please fill it as, as clear as you can. And then I'm sure that um, the one half most likely would be for you, whereas the other, you would pass it to the counselors. Are they going to follow the counselors or they just feel? Just a moment. Okay, so you're going to feel it while you're standing. Now, please don't go back to your seat with it. Um, if they don't have pens, barrels to write someone, do well. Be a good Samaritan. Help them with the pen so that they feel it right here in front. We're patient to allow you. Um, it's yours. Please complete it and then you hand it over to the counselors. And then I'm sure that afterwards you'll be back to your seat. And um, when and when they do call for those who just gave their lives to Christ, please do well to identify with them so that you can be followed up properly in Jesus name now just two instructions and then we're done tomorrow there is a morning session I understand let me encourage everyone please and please um, do your best as much as you can to be here and if for any reason you are not able to be here do your best to at least connect online I believe that it will be online so that you listen because tomorrow now we're going to begin to deal with the keys of the kingdom and then as we always do i hope and pray that with the permission of reverend tomorrow night will be a miracle service where we'll take the time to really minister to the needs of people hallelujah so i'm requesting in advance that all of you number one invite as many people i'm sure that extra provisions will be made and then please come with your prayer requests i love to pray for people and their requests write your request you can receive that of your loved ones who are not here um, those of you online I'm sure that there should be the church link the media team will make it available so that you can send in your request and tomorrow we'll have the time to pray to minister to as many and then trust God for a mighty move of his spirit in this place but for now may the Lord bless you may the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ your victory as a result of light begins right now in Jesus name we have prayed God bless you thank you